Hello and welcome. I, of course, am your game master, Adam, and uh, we're going to be having a whole bunch of fun today because, uh, well, you'll see some of the surprises we've got in store. One of them will be um, uh, unveiled right off the bat. If uh, you're joining us for the first time, this is Cinematic Epic, where uh, you can, you're always welcome to try a narrative-first experience where uh, uh, players navigate through my deadly, deadly world, desperately trying for uh, me not to turn on the red lights of doom, despair, and, of course, death. But to help bring this world alive, we have to give a shout-out to Tabletop Audio. Tabletop Audio is a great resource to help enrich the environment, whether it's your dungeons, your your manors, your crypts, your spaceships, your battles, your forests, you know, in the fall time. It's uh, it's just a good way to help bring an ambiance to, uh, to your tabletop, whether you are digital like us or at the table at home. If you missed last session, a quick recap of the things that happened were uh, the party ventured into the mudflats with the squire they had chosen, Tim! Uh, he was uh, very helpful. Uh, he navigated quite a few times, but the party had to uh, brave the first wall, a series of steep mountains, that, or not mountains, steep hills that had mud flowing down them constantly, though no source of the mud ever um, you know, appeared at the top, yet it always flowed. So it was this, this magical enrichment. Every time Sequoia tried to reach out to the mud, she was getting some sort of synaptic or, or magical or arcane feedback. And the party has been, uh, curious to what lies beyond the surface of the mud. They interacted with the orcs of the mud flats, the denizens who put up with a very harsh environment, and um, their casualty rates are astronomically high. The party was immediately shocked with how awful it is to live here, but they did imagine that the rent prices must be pretty low. They were on their way to talk to Galatrax within a bar when the last session concluded, and that is where we will be picking up today. But to be able to pick up the session, we are going to have to bring in the rest of our party and the first of our surprises, but let's uh, bring them on in. <sighs> Hello. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> doing pretty Good. Well. Uh, Still alive. Still alive with the first... <laughs> With the first of our surprises, there is no uh, Sequoia with us today. So uh, don't worry, I will be filling in as the character. What's it to ya? Um, we'll, uh, we'll maybe talk a little less with that character in this session. But let's introduce the characters we do have here, starting everything off with Orlena. How we doing? <laughs> You know what? Doing okay. And I have to say, that is the best what's it to you yet. I'm just going to let you know. Props. Oh, but, um... only downhill. <laughs> okay, so my name's Alicia. I am playing the character Orlena. <laughs> She's a quirky elf from the Elven Kingdom over Vathius. She stands about 5 foot 10 inches tall. Yep, 10 inches tall. She has long, dark, shiny hair and bright violet colored eyes you can use to see in the dark. Um, tragedy struck her early in life. She, her parents were killed and she became an orphan. Um, but her father being a great healer and her mother being a baker, she found that she also had an affinity for baking. But she could imbue her baked goods with magical properties which have proven helpful thus far so she's always baking she always has something to snack on because snacks but she left Orvathius to try to find a special herb that she needed to bake the best baked goods she will have ever baked to try to avenge her parents so she is this isn't the part this isn't the first party she's been in she's been She's met and lost many people along the way, but she's hoping that in this, she's found what she's been looking for. Yeah, that, that is very true. Very true. Some, some friends moved on. Some were carried off by uh, dragons and, uh, and, and other, other sorts, and, and some met unfortunate ends. 
Speaking of unfortunate ends, we will introduce the second of our uh, of our characters real quick, which will be the one that uh, I play through before we hop over to Tavish, which is Sequoia. Sequoia is normally played by Jasmine. She is not here tonight, so I will be uh, playing that role. Um, she is a sprightly uh, young little lady who I believe is something like four seven or four eight. Uh, she is very small. Uh, she uses earth magic of a bunch of different varieties. She comes from the Forbidden Forest, same as her uh, adoptive adoptive mother, Hedera, uh, who she is investigating uh, the missing of. She keeps hearing uh, different tales that Hedera still lives, but in her heart, in her gut, and from a magical sense, she knows that Hedera is no longer with us as she learns more and more about this and the twisted tale in which that Orlina plays in uh, the story of Hedera. What's it to ya? But let's get back to the rest of the party. <laughs> Next up, we've got Tavish. Uh, How we doing? Doing quite well. Um, I'm Ian. I'm going to be playing Tavish tonight. Uh, Tavish is a six-foot warrior. Um, best believed. Best to be known that he's good with a blade as well as he's good with his words. Uh, he's got a task set before himself and he's still kind of trying to figure out how he's going to accomplish it but he is going to do his best uh, that's really it for Tavish at the moment he, he is not a, come... a man of many words you know he, uh, he, he <laughs> keeps to himself for the most part but he has a rather expressive voice so hopefully we do hear him talk more and let's get on over to the last, the not least, but always last, last, Epsilon. Wow. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> my name is James, and tonight I'll play at Epsilon. Epsilon's a half-dragon human. Uh, he's six feet tall. He has fangs, claws, uh, a tail, and horns that crown his head. Um, Epsilon, he mainly fights, uh, he fights with fire and sword, right? He carries a hand-and-a-half long sword that his father gave him before he left on his journey uh and he's from a uh a community called I almost said hermit hollow green grove watch you gotta be messing up now you get from green grove watch right which is a basically a retirement home for like great heroes uh and he's trying to live up to father's role in the world you know his father can no longer do hero work so he feels that it is his obligation to step into that role. And uh, now we're out here at the mud fort. And they out and they out here, they don't think much of us heroes. And it's real sad out here. So we'll see what Epsilon can do. Because he, he, all his skills is in fight. He ain't got no kind of, no diplomacy. Got, it got some magic knowledge. But so we'll see what we can do out here. I, I, I'm, I'm just curious to know what's going to happen if... Uh if Epsilon has to stay a night in the mud flats. <laughs> oh, he, I think <laughs> just sleep on a, a, sleep on a mud roll, just, you know, scoop up some mud, lay in the mud. Like how, how does, how does Epsilon handle that? It's already rough just being dirty the way we are right now. Uh, but I feel like he has, he's made peace with the fact that we're going to have, we're, we're probably going to have to stay out here. They're, they're, after definitely seeing that the, the, the trek we had to make to come inside, why would we go back outside to go to sleep? You know what I mean? It's about we. It's just what it is at this point. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> Drinking so, mud water uh, as we enter our pre-session preamble. Um, to, to go over a couple of things. So in the last session, each of you earned yourselves some different um, cinematic tokens. Um, so let's see here. We've got. Or Lina is at two minor tokens, and the rest of the party each decided to take uh, the upgrade, so each of them has one um, medium cinematic token. And then um, to edit our gold, uh, we have Epsilon at 181 and a massive debt looming over him, Or Lina at 188, Sequoia at 128, and Tavish at 50. All right. Exactly. He look. He bought himself a, a suit of armor. He's you know, he was treating himself right off the bat, and uh, hey, that's what we do. Um, At but least I don't let... have any crazy debt Wait. over my head. Shh, shh, shh. That's fair. That's Wait, fair. I have how many? 
sorry. I have so sorry. you. With, I have you at one eighty-eight. Okay, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. Before we go, um, is this the next day? Do I still have muffins? How? Am, what am I working with? Um, yes, like... you, you would still have the, the allotment that you had going uh, at the end of last session. So okay. that would be have... one laughing, six healing, uh -huh. as you used um, a couple for mm -hmm. um, the rest of the group. And then, what would say, that would be nine, so 10, 11, 12, 13, so four regular um, just edible muffins. Just There's like food muffins. He fed the muffin to the guy, and we saw that that joint did not get digested because his insides was okay. not was not digested. I just have to correct that because for some I have six, six, and one. So hold on. Six, six, one. Uh... Yeah, I, I had eight healing, um, one laughing, remainder um, regular, and then you used two healing for the the right works in the tank. All right put three because i thought i had six, six i don't know that's what i had so i was just double checking but at the very minimum you have more healing muffins now so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes okay okay that was my thought. only question without further ado we can hop into our episode episode four <laughs> As the party gathered around the uh, the the bar, or if you could call it that, really a tent with that just has mud in it. There there are stools, but most of the orcs um, opt to stand, as um, sitting in the stool just as you sink. Um, some of the um, non-genetic orcs, like uh, you know humans and such, will sit in the stools as they're not quite heavy enough to make the uh, the stool sink all the way. But the uh, biological orcs definitely all prefer standing. Uh, Galatrax brings you over to the premier table of uh, of the bar, which is really just the the one that looks like it is on the largest wooden platform, so it sinks the slowest and the least. <clears throat> Fancy. So. Heroes from Ambervale. What hero work are you here for? I like look over at Tavish. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to offer aid and supply as we can. There was no true direction. We were told to come to the mud fort and give assistance where we could and where we can. <clears throat> what supplies did you bring then? Did you say supplies? The, suppl the supplies that we brought were meager, as we were told we only had a 24 hour pass to get into the mud flats and then return outside the mud flats. It was more indeed that they were hoping that we would have our greatest success. May I see your pass? Um, Tim starts rifling through his bag for the pass. Okay, good, good, Tim. Nodding, <clears throat> I'm nodding at Tim, like, yeah, that's why. That's so, why here. you, what skills do you bring? And he, he's staring at Epsilon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I have skills with with the blade I have need me to I can I guess I could clean some water up actually potentially I can make some I could try to heat some water up so we can have some actually clean water that isn't uh, like this but <laughs> the lad's forte is in magic especially fire and hmm. the blade a mage. Well, I mean, I, I have, I have many talents. I have, I can fight with the sword as well. <laughs> we'll see. Perhaps someday we'll spar. You and he looks at Orlena. What skills do you possess? 
mostly healing. I can I can defend if necessary, but mostly healing. You are a baker. Yes, that's how I do my healing. Hmm. An interesting way of to go about it. Hmm. You Perhaps have to you... heal from the inside out. Fair. And you? He gestures to Sequoia. Ah. Uh, I do earth magic and such. And she kind of like shuffles a little bit like out of direct like attention from from the orc and comes closer to um uh Orlina. This whole group's really blunt. She like whispers behind Tavish's back. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I am Galatrax. I am Hero of the Mudflats, is the title they call me. I have slain many of these totaline creatures, which are the main sustenance for the people here. If you are going to bring aid to our humble abodes, it's stability, it's, it's water, it's food, medicine, these are the things that we will require. Strength of arms is something that we are not wanting for. Yeah. I can see it's that. It's the gentle I side can. of life that we miss. Uh, at this point, Tim has pulled out the sheet and hands it over. Mm. <laughs> I see now why you only have been given 24 hours. My father does not allot for time for outsiders. And he kind of tosses it back. <sighs> Your father? Garak. Oh. Father by blood. By my own choice, I recognize no lineage in him. <clears throat> and he spits out oh. to the side. Oh, damn. A brutal way of life he wants the orcs to live. I see a horizon where we can join the other races in something peaceful. Perhaps that's well, something you all can aid in. Are you are you the only one that feels that way? Or are there other orcs that I don't know, kind of see things the there same way? There are many. There are many orcs who wish for a better life for freedoms, for our nomadic ways to return, but war plagues us, territory loss, supply chains being cut, and in general just a harsh existence where most of the time we are not looked out for. As those words are uttered, the uh, entrance to the bar is opened and you hear Ah, oh, it is you, heroes. It's it's Aww. me, Can. You, Aww. you're responsible for my boy living. I, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, bartender, please, an ale for each of them. Um, and he looks for his coin purse. That he can't find oh. one. Uh, oh. I, I, I see I... I overspoke my... My generosity, I... Oh. Um, then let tries. us do Oops. the kindness for you. As I take out some gold and place it upon the bar. And order not um, only drinks for each of us, but one for him. Uh, um, I would like to say... Ow. Ow. <laughs> uh, what are they drinking? This one, I was like, listen, I'm not even, I'm not saying anything, but there's a look on Epsilon's face, just like he's thinking, like, can I drink anything that they serve here? And I was getting like that guy from earlier. Right. Was like, that was a mud fruit, um, a mud fruit that he ate. 
Galatrax um, reaches over and scoops your coin back, Tavish, um, mm-hmm. and oh. goes, This one will be on me. If oh. you saved an orc in the mud, in the first wall, the mud hills, solely because you heard their cries, that's hero's work. And hero's work will be repaid oh. in kind. What strength do you drink at? I like straighten up a little bit. Dust some dust off of me when he says that. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'll not speak for the others, but I was always heard that if you drink with an orc, you can't take too many steps back from their level. I'll have what you have. Oh, no! Stop! (laughs) Oh, God! Ah, well. Yeah, you heard him, Tender. Send it out. One for each of us. You fool! <laughs> no. Um, despite um, what you ex- while the the glass is definitely dirty on the outside, it is surprisingly clean on the inside. Now, maybe not to an Amber Valian standard of clean, but like for the surroundings, you're like, in all honesty, you can see the bottom clean the of the inside glass. Of that glass pretty decent. Yeah. Um, like, the liquid. The liquid is concerningly clear. And as you smell it, you're like, oh my goodness, this is a high proof alcohol. But it's safe. <laughs> is that even just a high proof alcohol? The higher it is, the safer um, it be, lads. But it's a big <laughs> mistake, like, it's like a flagon each, of it, right? Yes. Each one of you are given a, a like, cup that, like, Galatrax could pick up with his hands, and he is very tall. So, as an example, to Sequoia, to pick it up, she is going like, Oh! Thanks! So we got like a 32-ounce glass of Everclear? Listen, I'm not gonna lie, I think I'm about to, I think I'm about to take some of this. Like, not drink it, but like, this could be useful in the future for something. For like, cleaning something or something. If we need, or if I need to like blow somebody up, I can throw that on them and then hit them with a fireball or something. I don't know, man. I might have to cake them this with me. Uh, actually, like, is there you know a way what? for me oh. to like discreetly, like <laughs> discreetly pour some of this? Into... <laughs> the uh, Galatrax looks at the party and looks at Can and goes, "You can lead this one, Can." Uh, Can looks up at the party and goes, "I drink because I have another day to, another day to." Watch my child grow. Love my wife. To heroes like you. And, uh, Galatrax echoes, To heroes like you. And they grab the drink oh, no, and no. then just drink it in one shot and I knew clap it down on the, uh, the, on the table. I am taking a, um, a conservative sip Lord. of this. I am going to get made fun of. I already know it. It's too late for me. But I have to think about my constitution and needing to work after this. I feel like... I feel like I would try to, like... I'm not taking a conservative sip because Orlana is no bitch. So, she would try to drink, like... I'm not going to say she's trying to... She's not going to chug it, but she's going to take as as good a, like gulp as she can because there's no okay. way you gotta know there's not we can't <sighs> listen uh epsilon he, I, he knows he's gonna get made fun of but his his manhood does not lie in drinking he hits okay it, it might cause Tavish. Him, i don't know what's about to happen but or let ain't lie she ain't no bitch tavish will look at galatrax and khan and say i hope you'll forgive me is there somewhere quiet that i can drink this I have a horrible affliction that I wouldn't want to scar your eyes with. Um, um, Galatrax just, like, looks over to, like, like some of the crowd around who, like, you can see, like, that they've taken wounds and they're just festering and, like, you can see bone in places. Some orcs just have, like, lopped off hands and, like, have just wrapped it, but the wounds are still bleeding. Um, and he looks back and he goes, if you can offend an orc, I don't know who you can't offend. He's like, you see this? You see all this? Checkmate. Checkmate. All right. 
Tavish lifts up just so his mouth can be exposed and takes a hearty gulp. All right, let's roll a fort check for every member in, uh, in the party. Sequoia goes, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> the fort check, uh, this fort check will be harder on uh, both uh, Sequoia, or not Sequoia, on um, Orlina and Tavish, as you are both attempting to kind of not keep up with the orcs, but take heartier sips, oh. and will be lighter on Sequoia and um, Epsilon. They're taking more like, oh, yep, that's not for me. Look, I feel like I should get points for resistance. Um, oh, bro. <laughs> Look at that roll, though. I ain't bad. Wrong. Your dice slapped my dice. Hey, get wrecked by the big dice. Not tiny dice no more. Um, big dice now. Um, no, but just smack them out. So Sequoia takes a sip, and she is immediately like, Oh! Oh, wow! Oh! 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 Oh, I feel it. I am tingling. Oh, my goodness. And is, like, immediately, like, off balance. And... And like oh, no. slipping and like giggling like to herself in the mud. Um, Tavish, um, you don't have um, you don't have quite that same um, effect. You're not giggling, slipping in the mud, um, but you do feel it. It's just this awful burn, and you can tell that this is. It's like not just. It's not a regular formed alcohol. It is clearly some sort of like infused something there's some form of magical element to the way this is uh this is created and you feel yourself while it's not like the standard style of like drunk you feel as if you're like you the whole world is kind of like vibrating like uh, back and forth not like this the, the armor's trembling um uh. um i do apologize epsilon what did you roll 18 18. 18. Um, you're able to, like, start to take a sip and go, like, oh, I'm not drinking a lot of this. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, <laughs> even with the, the, the little bit of drink, though, you do feel this a similar feeling to, to Epsilon. Not quite the, the vibrating, but you're, like, if you were to drink a whole lot of this, it would directly affect, like, how and what you cast. Like, it is some form of arcane-infused beverage that they just casually drink. Dang, they're cold and, out here. Uh, I'm over here like Orlina. a fallen elf. We have a fast metabolism. Continue. Um, <laughs> elves do, uh, you know, uh, have faster metabolism. That's true. Trying to keep up with the, uh, the orcs, you get about a third of uh of the way and you're like that's when you kind of like put the glass down you're like oh boy that is that uh that is oh. what is this <laughs> i'm like what is what is this um and um the uh, galatrax goes <clears throat> long ago we realized that the mud itself has a magical nature to it. So, this is what we call mud wine. It is from the mud directly, but it is distilled and, well, filtered many, 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 many times. Yeah, because it's pretty yeah. clear. I can. That Ooh. kicks like a mule. Going in my bag and trying to get containers to get the leftovers uh, as much as I can <laughs> from every cup. You ain't taking mine. <laughs> I mean, if you go so, drink it, drink it. But if you ain't drinking um, it, I'm just. I didn't feel I was going to drink it, but you know what? Like I said, that was a good idea. This seems useful. Can I? Can I, take, can I take some to go? He just gestures to the bartender. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask. <laughs> the you should go to the mud falls next. To you get to stay in this area. There is a woman there by the name of Palumbi. She is 
important to another family of Orc. If anyone was going to get you a longer stay, it would be her side of the family. Me questioning my father will get you nothing. Heck, it might even hurt your case. But if you ever want to help me here, in the mudflats, stability, food, Medicaid, water, that's what we... And um, he's interrupted as a, like, bright blue and yellow light starts to, like, form and a circle appears and a portal opens up in the middle of the bar. Oh. And Galley comes, like, stamb like stumbling out. Oh, I am, geez. I am very, very sorry, um, uh, um, Galatrax, uh, 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 hero of the Mudflats. Uh, but, uh, adventurers, we have to go. Um, there is an emergency happening, and you have uh, a retasking right now. Uh, again, uh, Galatrax, I am I am so sorry. And he, like, holds his hand up. If it's hero's work for these heroes, I have no quarrel with it. I will not speak of portals that were not seen to my father. Heroes. I want to clap man's forearm. Just, yeah! He he does. He, in, his hand envelops your whole hand. It's like he's yeah, holding I a child's hand. <laughs> <laughs> like the Hulk. For real, Hopefully though. you think of us. And like I said, seek out Palumbi. She'll be of more help. Where wait, For now, where is she? Best of luck. She'll be in the mud flat or the mud. No, we're in the mud flats. The mud falls. The mud falls. Mud falls. Did did I get my mud wine to go? Yes, uh, that has been jarred up. Cool. You have three jars. Oh, about me? What about um, me? These I, are uh, much smaller jars. They're more like. Oh yeah. You didn't ask. Um, I was okay. going for okay. my 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 flag like and whatnot. Not. Dang it. Do I have... I guess I don't Do have time to ask, ask one question. Do you mind if I ask one question before we leave? See, uh, we all had a question. One sec <laughs> yes, you... Yes, uh, so questions can all be asked in a second to address you first, okay. Epsilon. Um, uh, so, um, you can have filled your, like, water canteen with the mud wine, if you would like. There is, is there water in the canteen right now? <laughs> uh, there would have... I mean, you would have been drinking it throughout, like, the, the travel and stuff, so it would be like you pour out, like four six ounces kind yeah, of thing, I'm doing and it then... i'm doing it yep all right i got four, four jars four uh three three okay cool i'm gonna find look this is gonna be I'm gonna... okay okay all right and now questions um we'll start with orlena then tavish okay um you were talking about trade routes how did they get here like how did they get into here before how did because you, you said they were cut off how did they get here before so before we had a small pop-up town if you will that would be put outside of the first wall that traders could stop through but mm -hmm. it wasn't being sanctioned so therefore it wasn't being protected by Ambervale or its um, parties which means that it was attracting more and more bandits, which means that less and less traders showed up. And we couldn't afford to uh, defend ourselves outside of our territory, as then it created stories of orcs creating violence. Okay, so, okay. Because you said that that was something that could help, so I guess I wanted to know how it happened before, because maybe we could figure out a way for it to happen that way again, but better. A trading post would go a great deal to help us out. One officially recognized by Ambervale. Okay. Okay. That was my question. And Tavish? I've got two questions for you. First, you said stability. But I have to admit, I see everything sink into the mud. How does one create stability here? Or how would you create stability here? Is it by wood panels or...? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, well, oh. this experiment is needed. Got it. Second thing, before I go. Mudwine. 
Is it hard to make? It is an orc family tradition. Difficult to not quite so much. But private, yes. A good idea might to put mud wine on the list of things to be traded. It's not only potent, but it might help with infection. Um, at this point, Galley kind of like reaches in. Uh, so uh, people could be dying, so we should uh, uh, go. I uh, offer forearm grasp to Galatrax. Yeah, he stands by the portal, so that like like that would be like when he grabs Epsilon, grabs you, like so. Anyone who does that, Sequoia would <laughs> jump up like and like high five him. Jump up and ah. I'd just ah. jump up and low five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, uh, each one of you makes it through the portal. The portal takes you directly into um, Anguin's chambers. Um, in his chambers, as you oh. step in, uh, you can tell he anticipated you all coming from the mud flats, and there is like a tarp thrown out on the ground where your feet hit and splatter out mud onto what would have been the floor. Uh, that's fair. Uh, I would like to. <laughs> I would fair. like to. Now that we're here, I would like to attempt to use magic to clean myself off. Oh yeah, that's more than easy to do. So yeah, while while this is happening, you can be like cleaning yourself off with some some magic and etc. Um, Anguin goes. <clears throat> so, it seems that we have some pressing concerns. Um, a city is about to be hit by a wave of aggression by two different forces. The city itself doesn't matter too much to me, though its name is Nil Hicks, if you cared about it. But inside of it is a mage's guild. Inside the mage's guild is a uh, compatriot of mine. A compatriot that, well, most likely will perish if you're not able to get to him in time. So what I need you to do is simple. I will create you a portal. You'll go through said portal. And once you're there, you will get my compatriot back. He will likely be in one of two places in the city. Either his home in the Nobles District, or in the Academy District where the Mage's Guild presides. <clears throat> Orlena, I am going to entrust this task primarily to you. You will lead this escapade of your party or whatever you want to call yourselves um does anyone have an objection to that no no good but we um, need the man the man's name or a woman's name yes yes um but first um and um a a force kind of slides uh orlena a step forward and like a bubble appears over the rest of the party and you cannot hear what is state said and the mouths seem to blur so you can't read lips to a sidebar with orlena oh oh <laughs> ah, so orlena i will tell you the information and allow you to tell your compatriots as you see fit. Uh, technically, there are three mages that are, I guess, worth saving. Uh, Malachi the Necromancer, Pyrus the Kinetic Mage, and the most important of the three, my compatriot, Cicero. He is a, an agent of mine, if you will. Also, inside the Mages' Guild, they will have some relics and artifacts that, um, well, are going to be destroyed or lost if the city is taken. So, okay. perhaps procure them for certain things that the two of us are working on. I wouldn't think of it as stealing so much as uh, forward-thinking archaeology, lest these relics be lost to the destruction of a city. Okay. Um, what things? 
Trust me, you'll see most of them. You'll know them when you see them. But the one most important to us is a... It will look like a small white orb. Though it will act as a liquid when um, applied to touch. You should be able to mold it around in the air. It is a bonding agent of great power. Normally used for potions or flasks and stuff. But for us, it will be used to use something much more important. It's the primary ingredient to allow the Reaper root to take effect for the two of us. Okay. Okay. Um... How big is this orb? Is it... I guess um, I'm thinking, what am I going to put everything in to get it back? <sighs> Ever greedy, not so creative. <laughs> and he pulls out a small bag and goes, you can borrow this. The, but like, if you reach for it, he kind of like pulls it back a little bit and goes, I expect it to be returned. And then pulls his hand back out again. Hey. What is this? It is a bag that will allow you to place things into a small pocket dimension of my own creation. Though, the only entrance into this dimension is via that bag. Okay. Don't lose the bag. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, find the mages... Get the things. Put it in the bag. Bring back the bag. And again, only Cicero matters to me. The others are nice, I guess. And did you say, okay, Cicero, I remember. You said the other ones were Malachar, Malachar, Malachi? Yes, Malachar and Pyrus. Malachar and Pyrus. Okay. Are they, mm, but, okay. One more question. You said that your friend, I'm assuming Cicero, is either going to be in the Nobles District or the Academy Academy District, where the Mages Guild is? Yes. Would they all be in the same area? You think the other two are probably in the Mages Guild? If you had to guess. The others could be anywhere within the city, but oh. that is why they are not important to me. If you save them, I will give you a pat on the shoulder. If Cicero dies, it will be much more dire. Okay. I leave it to you how you want to direct your group of heroes. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, let's bring them into the fold then. And he waves his hand and the bubble disappears. Let's rejoin the party. All right. I'm going to prepare the next portal. Your sergeant or whatever you heroing parties call your group leaders will inform you of the necessary information. And then you will be off. And Angwin steps over and starts activating some arcane like magic in the air to make the next portal. Are we going to be able to portal back? Yes, I will. You'll see that it is quite uh, perilous in the city once you're there. I will open uh, portals every five minutes for 30 second intervals. After, we'll say, 30 minutes or so, I will cease to open portals. Okay. Okay. And you'll be opening us up close to this person's home. Activity. As close as I can, as safely as possible. You getting spliced in a portal won't do us much good. But I'll get you to the best of my abilities, which are quite formidable. And again, he continues making his spell okay. room set to do this so cast. I'm come back I am to the same place these we were dropped, so... Come back to the same place we were dropped off at. Okay. Got it. <sighs> I don't know if you went through yet or not. I'm not going to um, 
So, uh, uh, what's the what's the deal, Sergeant? What are we doing? Oh, well, who are you? We are retrieving, Sergeant. Their name is Cicero. Um, Cicero. Cicero. And again, he said that they could be either in the Nobles District, where they live, or the Academy District, where the Mages Guild is. Um, if we can, if we come across other mages that we can rescue, awesome. But Cicero is who we're looking for. And do we know who, what they look like? In case we don't find oh. them alive. He told me that I would... What? Go ahead. What are you going to say? No, oh, I was just going to say, uh, uh, on, on that one, Anguin would like look over her shoulder and go, the only one that matters looks similar to me. Oh. And wow. goes back to... Hey, that... Hey, that... Explain. Wow. I was going to say, he said that we would know him when we see him. God dang, snakes out here, man. The snake in my boot. Um, you would note that uh, that this this portal with with whatever he's trying to do to make it so he can like open and close it is taking a toll even on his own arcane abilities. Like some of his scales like deaden and like chip and fall off of his body as he begins to like cast and open the first gate. So That's not scary at all. Here we are. And the portal like opens and you are looking into a far off land. Uh whatever you uh, Tavis draws his sword off his back and starts yep. walking through the portal. Oh, Raw. Nice. Bloop, 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 bloop. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> you step through the portal. And you are in the city of Nil Hicks. Around you, the, um, the there are crowds. You hear, like screaming and panic as, as people are running through the city you there's you definitely hear the signs uh sounds of looting bells are chiming in the distance birds are all flying off away from this storm that is like sloping down this like mountain in this unnatural speed on the other side of the city you hear um army battalions and formations like taking like root on the other side of the city as uh their catapults start launching in and like landing and breaking towers and 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 buildings and such um there are basically two armies marching on this city and as what you gather is neither one of them is friendly to this city guards are abandoning their post children are being left in the streets and as you gain your bearings you must be in what you can imagine is the town square or at least a square within the town or within the city um the four districts that present themselves uh, to you are the academy district the nobles district the commons and the marketplace is there any information on any of the districts presented uh that uh, that you all would like um from your standpoint goodness um Well, he told us to try. He might be in the noble district, so I guess I'm wondering about that. So, that's one uh, of the places we're supposed to be looking. Are, are we splitting up or staying together? Mm. I, uh, I don't think it's a good idea to split up here, but we have a lot of ground to cover. I mean, that's two whole districts. They go in opposite directions. And uh, yes, it is. They to go to the academy district, you would head off down the right roads. To go to the nobles district, you would head off down the left roads. Which one looks like it has the most concentration of guards? You mentioned that guards were abandoning posts, um, children were being left kind of to their own defense. Yes, so. Um, to, to give you a, so what it looks like is the academy district looks relatively quiet. It is it is a probably less traveled, um, like uh, part of the city. It like the foot traffic isn't as as severe. There are still people like running etc. But it is less panicked. Whereas like the commons 
it is people are trying to like gather their children and gather their their worldly possessions and make it out and it's like this this funneling group of no one knows which way to leave the city there's armies on either side what do they do the guards are leaving their posts no one's helping them they're just like people are getting trampled etc the market district has broken down into nothing but looting and chaos shop keeps trying to like keep themselves like what can they salvage of of the life that they had built here as they try to like get out of the city and then the nobles district looks the again similar to the academy district where it is still panicked you still see people fleeing but these people are like hopping into carriages with like armed guards near them and like of riding off a little more organized Well, okay. So he did say we only have about 30 minutes. That's not a whole lot of time. So if we did, we could do it in pairs, but we would have to be back here in 30 minutes. So we're not going to, or we're going to have to walk back. If we get left in this city, there's uh, a good chance that we will die. <laughs> so I don't want to get I... left here. With as disorganized as the defenses of this city are, this city will fall. It might stand for a day or two, but two armies on either side are not going to allow it to escape. Or at least not stand. Sequoia is standing like bone stiff, staring into the storm. She seems bizarrely tense not blinking and she seems to be silently like muttering to herself Boya, what do you see she doesn't respond I, can I look see if I I don't know see what's if you, I see anything like as yeah. as you follow her gaze into the into the storm it like it's just clouds and you definitely can see that there's winged creatures like in the clouds as like the lightning flashes but you can't tell what specifically she's staring at it's like the battle yeah. of middle earth there's some there's something in those clouds up there something thing some things with wings then we need to move quickly all right uh i think orlena and i should go together and then sequoia and tavish together that for they be the most balanced okay. formations. Okay. Sequoia and I should take the noble district. My armor will at least make it look like we're supposed to be there. You two look like the parts of apprentice and mage. It should allow you a way to get in. I'm not I gonna waste attitude. my time on the rich. We're not trying to save the rich. And uh, Sequoia turns towards the, the, the commons. Um, her, her skin looks like more like her normal flowing like kind of disposition is gone. Her her skin looks heavy, almost stone esque in its nature, and this weird energy is arcing off of her. As uh, this is the Sequoia oh. that you all are looking at. Oh. Um. You good? Mm. Are, you, are you good? <laughs> Let her go, lads. Abandoning If it wasn't post. you, it was going to be me. Go help the commons as much as you can. I'm going to do what I can to find the lad, Cicero, at home. If he's not there, I'll join you in the commons. If you can, these people get as many... Need... We need to get, to get as many, as many of these people, people out. Sorry, we're on the same page. We're on the same page. <laughs> I was gonna say, just get them here, and they can. We can just send them through the portal. That's not what he wanted it for, but it's the fastest way for people to get out of here. Hey. Yeah, that's not at all what he wanted it for. Hey, hey, I, I didn't ask to be sent on this mission. Get... Hey, but also at the same time, I don't know move. if they're gonna listen to uh, strangers. But sure. They'll if they don't know you. Me. They might think that you're. They might think that you're fighting with. The, they might think that you're the enemy. I don't know. They, but here we are. Last okay. there's nobody in this we're, city who's been breached. We're yet. wasting Mar time. Right, let's, let's go. I'm going. I'm <laughs> going. 
Orlino and Epsilon are heading to the Academy District, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Uh, Tavish is heading to the Nobles District, and yep. Sequoia is heading to the Commons. Yep. So light some shit up. Perfect. All right. As each, uh, as as you all like, start running off into your um, respective district districts, it begins to rain, and then rain harder, and oh. rain harder still, and then hail starts mixing in with the rain, as stray bolts of lightning begin to pepper the city, green in their oh. color, she loud, much much louder. The city streets immediately can't handle the amount of water that is is filling up as the the drainage system is not meant for it. And you see as if there's almost a city in the clouds. Cannonballs, fireballs, trebuchet rounds, ballista rounds start peppering into the city, some of which are being intercepted by stray bolts of lightning as they crash. This also introduces an epic encounter. Ah, shit. Okay. (laughs) In this epic encounter, at the end of of a full round, so a player action made by our three players here and one by Sequoia, the Calamity dice is rolled. For each round completed, the Calamity becomes more certain. He he hail. All right. So, as you each enter your own uh, your own district, um, um, Tavish for you. Luckily, this you can tell like normally a, a, a probably a pretty gated community with a lot more security. Finding a place that literally just says Cicero on it is very easy. The sign stands out almost like just right off the bat. However, as you are at the house, you do hear a family crying out for help on the opposite side of the street. Not the family. I go to them. I found Cicero's house that's good enough for me for the moment, so I go to the family to see why what's ailing them. You see that their house has been struck by one of the uh, the bolts of lightning, and the roof has collapsed down. A support beam has fallen over, and the house is beginning to like tip into the house uh, next door. And you can tell that the uh, the mother and uh, a small child, uh, probably uh, two to three months in age, are stranded in one of the upstairs bedrooms. They are at the window screaming out. The uh, the father is in the, the front yard preparing the carriage when he when this all happened and is just like looking up at horror and dismay as he can't get in the front door as the frame is compromised. Uh, do I still have the rope from earlier when we were in the mud flats? Yes, you do. I hand one end to the father, and I tie the other end to a dagger that I have, mm-hmm. and I motion for the wife and child to move away from the window and throw the dagger up trying to break it through that window perfect let's see uh then understanding what you mean is as straightforward so uh, they are able to move out of the way but let's see if the dice roll if you are able to throw the dagger there through the wind the hail and all sorts of things going on oh no that's not that thing said with finality you you, nope. As you throw it, the wind just takes the dagger, hail pelts its blade, and it, like, skews off to the side and, like, clacks against the house, and you're, like, pulling it back to yourself. I tell the father to grab one end and tie it to his carriage, so that way the rope has a place to go. And then I hand him the other side of the knife and say, try to toss it to the window, I'm going through. As I go up oh. and I don't go to the front door, I try and find a window on the first level to break in and get into the house that way. That is easy to do, and that will be your uh, your turn for this round. Over with Orlina and Epsilon. The two of you uh, finding the Mage's Guild is, again, rather self-explanatory, as it stands out similar to the way the one in Ambervale does. However, when you get to its door, it is magically bound shut. Uh, I want to try and 
I guess. Crap. Okay. I want to um, look at the magic of the lock and see if there's like an easy way I can break it. I'm, I'm probably not gonna be. But I'm just gonna just try that. <laughs> but, let's see here. I got a study. You want arcane. to do a? Uh, yes. I got a one. That would be. Would that count? And then spell casting arcane. I got a one. Yes, study arcane is perfect. Let's uh, let's see it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh man. <laughs> Crap. So, luckily for you, the type of arcane lock that they're using isn't, like, advanced magic. So, while you don't see, like, into the intricacies of the spell, you do know that it is um, just a pure arcane magic. It isn't, like, a, a force magic or, a, like, any sort of specialty seal. Right. Uh, I just want to, I guess, I'm just going to literally just try to brew force it with magic. <laughs> Let's see it. How how are we theming this uh, this magic? Is it is it we doing fire? Are we doing arcane? I what think, are we? If I think I could overpower it with fire magic, I would do that. Yes, you definitely do think you could overpower it with fire magic. <laughs> All right, right let's. Uh, I got that good old plus uh, that plus four. You know, I'm trying. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> damn that damn! <clears throat> that, uh, oh, so I saw that four the... flash and I was like, "Oh god!" Oh no. my god! With uh, with your level four in this, it means that you are a plus one to this. So it is a roll of fifteen. Though you do have mastery, so you are allowed to roll again. A lower roll would not be taken. So you take the higher of the two rolls unless a one is rolled. Would you like to roll your second dice? Nah, we good with the with the fifteen. We good with the fifteen. Um, it takes you a little bit of time, but as you're like pressing the magic against it, you feel the magic like of the lock start to give, and then you're able to like force your way uh, through the door. It comes off of his, his its hinges, but you do have to like kind of collect yourself a little bit um, as you uh, are a little slow to follow Orlina through the door. Orlina, you see that there are uh, there is a spiral staircase that goes up and a spiral staircase that goes down. It's one staircase that just goes up and down, and then there is, like, two different doors on the main level. Where would you like to go? I'm over here, like... <laughs> I don't know if it's set up, like, similar to the other mages guild, and I'm trying to think, if that were the case, which way would be best for us to go? Mm. Mm. Well... Should we start? Should we start up and work our way down? I think that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> you got it, bro. So you both are heading upstairs. Okay, up we go. Perfect. Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm? Stick together. As uh, you you head upstairs, there is another uh, closed and magically locked door. Uh, though the door does look similar to the types of door that Anguin has uh, for his office at the Amber Valley and Mages Guild. Does that mean we're not going to be able to get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I guess world? it's time to look at this lock to <laughs> oh to my right, you want to you want to study the uh, so uh, study arcane. We'll, we'll yeah, do exactly. that. This would this will not be a forced action. However, attempting to unlock the door in the similar area will be in a forced action. So let's see that roll for study. Oh damn! Oh, it's good actually. Ooh. It's good. I forgot. That's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I forgot. That's so dice. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. My, I'm pretty sure it's twenty. Yeah. Like yes. With that, me. you are more than capable of, uh, of of understanding the type of magic that it is, and um, you're pretty sure that this time, like, provided you're able to summon up the same level of, uh, of uh, strength, that uh, you could break this lock easier now knowing how, like, the, the lock is placed. Okay. Yeah, also, I forgot to ask before God. session. Mm -hmm. I chose the, 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 the free force for my level up reward. Is that a la Jin, or is that just like a once per session kind of deal? Uh, give me one oh, second to double check that. I apologize. Uh, I do I believe that is a once a session, but again, I can check that for you. I have it here. 
Uh, oh, no, no, no. That one is, um, you, you do get it, um, uh, you get a free action, uh, per, um, per round, um, that you can do. Um, it just, your armor rating is always treated as one lower. Yeah, okay, so I want to, I don't want to fire off a spell yet, but I want to use my act, my free force to, to charge up a spell to break the door. Perfect. Basically. Is there anything that Orlina would like to do with your uh, combat action for this round? I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I can do at this point. Just stab the door. Try, we're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> try to pick the lock. <laughs> Just I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Couple arrows out. I know, right? That would be hilarious if I just, with a little dagger, just, doo -doo, I did it. It's unlocked. And he's just like, oh, <laughs> let the spell go. He'd be mad as hell. I mean, that's. But, uh, um, would you, so, I mean, uh, you also I, I could use yeah. your combat action as another movement action, so you, if you didn't want to stay on this floor. I was, the only thing that I was thinking about would probably be good to do is to take a, at least a quick look around to see if there is anyone that's not in one of these behind one of these locked doors <laughs> um so as you as you look around the areas up here are seemingly like open study kind of areas it's like a library it's it's desks it's tables there are no like doors that you see so if you could see somebody you would see them right now on this level okay you said library that's the only thing that's not behind a locked door is the library is that what you're just saying? Right next to the yeah, exactly. All right, just well, knowledge is important. It's just books. I mean, magic books. All right, I was going to say while he's while he's powering up over here, if there's nothing around and there doesn't seem like there's any immediate danger, I'm gonna look around in there real fast because you never know. Perfect. Let's let's get a um what. A, uh, do you want to do perception or investigate? Investigate. Like Epsilon's yes. just charged. He's like, yeah, yeah, good idea. Go look in there. <laughs> <laughs> Go steal. God. Go steal. <laughs> Let me know if you see anything cool. Go steal. <laughs> okay. So as you, you look through all the books, um, it is predominantly like books uh, similar to some of like the self journal stuff that Anguin has kept. So you're like, ah, a lot of this is kind of like largely just more like organizational books rather than like spell books or something like that. But one of the um, the journals that is open on the table is um, is like a, is a log about how um, they hate going into the basement because they always have to be so careful down there with uh, with everything that's kept. Oh. Okay. So it's time to loot the basement room. This one here. Okay. Okay. And um, since no one there is, since there is no one here to witness what is going on with Sequoia, we'll leave that as a surprise for later. However, oh. I will need a what for the party will be a miscellaneous Sequoia dice roll. Okay. God, I forgot that we left her. Hey, oh, she rolled good, good though. Yeah, she but did. At least she hopefully rolled well. good. I mean, I'm a little terrified after the idea of Sequoia being, you know, unsupervised at the moment. Um, oh, I just went full Hedera mode for a second. Mm -hmm. Seems and, like the Tempest stopped this bitch. Come. And with this round coming to an end, ah. it's time to roll for our first Calamity. You always have to remind me what these numbers mean for us. Blow the bad. high the, is the, good, the low is worse. bad. Okay, Adam. So, Adam, talk. A little, <laughs> little bit below, a little bit below the halfway line, um, the wind picks up harder. Still, the, you can now tell that the rain is is coming in almost sideways. Um, Tavish, for you, as you like break through the window, rain is literally like following you into the house, and it's in such high quantities that it's already starting to get like like floating above your feet level of water within the house as you glance back out onto the streets um the 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 father who is like wrapping around the, the cart he's almost into shin deep levels of water um and the wind is is blowing him hard enough that like he's like holding onto the carriage 
and if his horses weren't so well trained, you imagine they would have long run off by now. Yeah, so. um, over at the uh, the Mages Guild, you hear um, two different bolts of lightning come crashing down onto the building. If not for arcane wards that were placed on the building by the mages, you imagine they would have struck home into the actual surface of the building. You hear this weird diffused crackle as the, the bolts and you hear it like rippling down the sides as the whole building tremors under the force of the of the uh, the the blast. At this point, you can hear the sound of soldiers entering the city. Uh oh. Oh. Tavish, your next um, action or your next uh, your round two actions. Uh. To get up to the second level and into this room where the lady and the child are. Um, I'm, along the way, I look for anything that's like a staff or like a pole arm or anything that they can, I can use to help lower them down. Uh, let's roll a perception while you travel through the house. Yes, I've got that as a skill. <laughs> you needed it. Yep. Great. <laughs> um... You're it's you're not able to find anything like that like really really stands out as like oh this will be perfect but you do like briefly look into the kitchen and you see a rolling pin so you're able to grab a rolling pin. All right. Yeah, no, I'm not taking the rolling pin. <laughs> Don't disrespect me no. like this. Okay. <laughs> no, rolling pin. I'm all about to roll the bar right out of this house. Um, so uh, you head up to you're uh, you're able to head up the uh, the stairs relatively easily um, for you and your armor like pushing through the debris of the house breaking a few boards is is nothing but you can imagine with uh, a woman in cloth and uh, you know a baby it would be have it would have been nearly an impossible journey. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, reach there. Uh, you reach the the bedroom that you imagine that like you imagine she's in um oh, no. the door frame is askew so you'd have to break through the door to, to get in if i have to uh i yell for her to stand out of the doorway and then try to break in the door let's get a miscellaneous roll versus the sounds of the storm can she hear you? oh he gonna have to michael jackson blanket that baby out the window you yell as loud as you can, but it's hard to hear your own voice as as the hail beats down around on, on the, the roof, on the glass, on the wood, on the stone. And so you just have to hope that she's still looking out the window. Okay. Time to use my athletics to knock in the door, I guess. Athletics? Let's see it. I've got oh. to, if that helps. Okay. You, okay. like, step through and smash uh, through the door. You kind of have the, you know, the, this thought as you're coming through it to, like, put your weight kind of down into the door to make it at least collapse rather than, like, explode into the room, which is more than Thank capable you. with your weight and size. Um, as you you're, you get in, you do realize she is, in fact, still at the window. Um, so you're now at the room. However, at this point, any more attack actions and or movement actions will be forced. None taken at the moment. I'm just going to go okay. to her in the room. Yep. So getting to where she is is not, uh, it, there is no role to be needed, so you're fine. Um, All right. Oh. Is yelling or... Would yelling or inspire be a forced action at this point? Uh, yes. Insp well, so inspire would be uh, an, an action if you just wish to communicate. No. More phrase. If you want to communicate to her, you would not need to roll. If you would like to communicate to the husband, you would have to roll against the storm. Thus, yeah. A forced action. Got it. I'll hold off there for a moment then. Perfect. Over to our mage and uh, our baker. So you've got uh, this spell charging up in uh, in your hands. 
You're going to try to overpower uh, the magic seals on the door? E yep. And let's, uh, yep, I might as well make sure. I look around to see if Orlana's still in the, the library or not, basically, before I let the spell, spell off. Yes, she is. She is. You can hear her somewhere behind you. Yeah, so if I'm shooting it off, then. Let's see a roll. Come on. Oh, okay, shit. you know I got to re-roll that. Is, that. <laughs> that is a three to four. You, you know I got to re-roll that. He wishes to use his mastery for the re-roll, so let's see what he gets. He takes the higher of the Please. two, provided he doesn't roll a one. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh. okay. Can this... he only do that once, or can he do it every time? Every time. I think when you I get raised fire okay. magic. Yeah. Specifically. Um, okay. So, as you begin to send the spell out, at first, the spell wanes, and you're not finding the right things. You're overthinking the, the pattern and the locks, and you realize you have the power to just force through these seals. They pop one at a time each with uh, the, the knowledge you had garnered earlier um, or in your last round. Um, this time you are not nearly as winded. This still takes your attacks action, but your move action will be unaccosted as the door gives way. Inside, you see a frightened, scared, snake lizard-like creature clittering his, clattering his hands together. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> My name is Epsilon. Are you Cicero? Am I back here? Yes. Yes. You you can see like you're making it back your way back over is, is simple. Yes. Okay. A friend of hers sent us to come collect you. Good. Let's leave. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Um. Oh. Before. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, that's hold on, not so fast. He's nervous. Um, before we go, um, can you show us where the basement is? What? No, let's leave. Leave. Go. Quick. Where are we going? We're leaving, but I'm supposed to get basement? something out of the basement. But the basement is down, down, down. You, take me. And he points to, um, you, Epsilon. Let's leave. Do you, do you want to go? And I'll take this one. Go check out as the long basement. as he is <laughs> me I go where want to check it wanted to check out the basement I can take him back yeah I mean swear. I just yeah it's just if the door is locked I would appreciate if you could unlock the door fine 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 and he, he just throws you like <laughs> a, a, a bag of scrolls leave let's leave all right let's okay. go all right I'll meet you all right sure. be careful yes come 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 where are we going? <laughs> and he's he's just following you, Epsilon. Um, the your, town uh, square. Movement... Oh, easy. Um, um, Orlena, <laughs> your movement and um, uh, combat actions have not been used, so you may. Well, what kind of... He threw me a bag of scrolls. What are these scrolls? <laughs> um, it looks like mostly the, the scrolls he has are the ones he was using to lock doors with. Uh, so, so these would be the scrolls that unlock, unlock doors. doors. Yes. Okay. Okay. Give me a bag of keys. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Literally, bag of keys. All right. How many? Were there? Any, was that the only door up here, or were there more doors up here? Uh, there, there was no doors up here. There are two on the mid level, and then you don't know what's in the basement. Do I know which door is the basement door? Uh, no, you would not know. The, the spiral right, staircase so, uh, goes can, down. Okay. So the spiral staircase on the mid level goes down a floor, up a floor, and then there were two gotcha. doors on the mid level. Okay. 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 Well, I guess I'm gonna make my way down. To the basement? Or, like, to yeah. the lower? Yeah. I mean, to the basement, because I guess that, that's whatever interesting is down there. If I have time, I can check the doors on the mid-level, but if I don't, I don't. <laughs> perfect. perfect. Um, as you get down to the basement, um, there is a door uh, there that is locked though rifling through the scroll bag um, for a second reveals an unlocking spell in which that you are able to do. However, this is your movement and your attack action for the turn. Would you like to force actions going into the room? Uh, I don't like that question. <laughs> uh. Uh, 
in my mind, I guess, just thinking of, um, I don't know, I guess I'm going to say in my mind, just thinking of, like, the past, I feel like since I don't know where I am or exactly what's in there, and they just said that, you know, it seemed because of the stuff they had to keep there, I feel like when I opened it, I wouldn't, like, just be like, oh, let's open the door. I'm kind of like, <laughs> opening the door, you know what I mean? Like, sneak opening it? <laughs> Right, I'm not like, just like, hey guys! I'm kind of so, uh, this, this, <laughs> I'm so not... would you like to uh, force action stealth open the door? Uh, just, I might have to, just in case. I don't like it, but I might have to, just in case. So this will be I, a roll at minus four. <clears throat> Let's see a stealth roll. Okay, that's not terrible. Been worse. <laughs> that could have been worse. It was Certainly. dancing a lot. I know. I was, you, I was terrified. You <laughs> just a little the bit creep. of the door. Um, it is just a like vault of like stone pillars with objects on top of them. Okay. 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 <laughs> and let's like, get a. Off. Miscellaneous roll for the Sequoia who is still oh. unseen. Unleashed unseen you mean. Sequoia. We've unleashed yeah. her. Dang. On the Sequoia. 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 Seventeen in a row. Two seventeens in a row. That's yes. a and one in four hundred chance right there. With the completion of this round, we Ooh. need to roll another calamity. However, this time, calamity. as calamity is becoming more certain, our calamity dice is only being rolled. On a D twenty. Dang. Okay. Oh That's boy. Note that these numbers are still acting as if this was a D thirty. So just just so you know that a twenty isn't the best option anymore. It is just the best that you could get on a D thirty where ten numbers were deleted from you. But this was a six, which is just a bad number to get in general. <clears throat> Tavish, what you see before you is one of the ballistas shots flying, and just at a at a glance, you're like, that's coming for this room. As the bolt is in the air towards this house, towards this room, one of the bolts of lightning hits it. Not knocking it off course, but energy arcs through this ballista bolt that is flying at the house. We'll get to uh, actions against this in a second as I describe the rest of the setting for the other party members. Oh. Orlina, you can't uh, you can't see what happens, but whatever hits, whatever strikes near, next to, or on, or at the Mage's Guild, all of the arcane runes that were giving you light sources to navigate click off. And you are in complete complete darkness even with your elf eyes it is it is staggeringly dark if it wasn't for your elf eyes you would not be able to see even in the slightest your elf eyes will allow you to see about five feet around you so you can kind of find your way through the dark out on the streets as epsilon you make your you're making your way uh, back to the town square. You see a bolt strike into the market district, and the sounds of looting, the sounds of, of, of yelling, of screaming, are deafened by the sound of impact. And then the district falls silent. You also look up as a bolt is coming down in your general direction. And without intervention, you will be in its blast radius. Don't, don't you let oh. that man die. So listen, I got for myself. What you mean? Let's start with Tavish. Tavish, this is you thinking about yourself. Bolt Imagine if he dies and we go back. Is you coming at been. your window. I don't know this man. It is charged. And it is going to make impact. You have eight seconds to make your decision. Won't know any other man if you don't. Make, I grab the woman and get her down as low to the ground as possible and put myself over her to make certain she's safe. Perfect. 
effect. Don't you we going to uh, We're going to roll. Let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This would be... We'll do... Hmm. Toughness for this roll for Tavish. I've got two toughness. and toughness. Oh, <laughs> that dice almost okay. tipped over. Almost, but, uh, but not quite. Uh, uh, mm -mm. The bolt comes in, and it, it it like it the room kind of explodes in violence. You're over them to the best of your abilities. That you feel and hear the shrapnel like of the of the room, the glass, the wood, you know, the energy arcing off of of this bolts, and it's like dying moments around you. And uh, you're gonna have to roll me a reflex check to see how well you can protect the people under you, moving your arms and limbs uh, around. I do have two reflex, which is nice to me. With a 10, you can, uh, so you are protecting both of them uh, pretty well, but who would be your focus, the child or the mother? I'm hoping that the mother's protecting her child, so I'm focusing on protecting the mother who I hope is protecting her child. The nesting let's eggs, a, people protecting each other. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get a miscellaneous roll for the mother and how well she's able to do this. Uh, okay, okay, that's good. Okay. That's a good mom okay, right there. Okay. Yeah. Mom Ooh, that's a good mother. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you will not be able to make an attack action this round as, as defending against this um, the, this uh, event was your attack action for the round. However, you may still make a movement action and you, of course you are always love, welcome to force actions. Is forcing an action, would that be using Inspire on the husband to be able to get him to bring the carriage closer to the house? Um, you It wouldn't be Inspire, but it would be you yelling against the storm to make sure that you are, that you are hood heard uh you could use inspire to supplement this role i would use inspire to supplement that role but that would be Perfect. a forced action would it? it would be a forced action yes i'm gonna have to try anyways let's see it so let's see that is your inspire with a two again oh look at that rolling hot when you're needed uh you can tell <laughs> he like barely can understand like what you're saying but you're able to get like the general uh like just across of being like, like pointing out where you are like, this is where i need you and he's able to circle around he runs over like one of the fences but who cares at this point and he gets the the cart as close to under the window as possible cool Good shit. and that's where i'll Good end shit. my turn perfect Good shit. or lina you're Hi. down in this basement you can hear upstairs whatever wards that were protecting this building are gone. There is definitely Crap. like running water um, like on the floors and you can hear the drips beginning to become more and more severe as as you know that this basement will flood. Okay. I'm trying to remember what I'm wearing. I don't know. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> um, I don't what know. What am I wearing? wearing? Uh, leather and like, leather I feel like armor. I feel like if it's I feel like if it's leather over it, there's some kind of cloth underneath it. So in my mind, what I'm doing is like taking an arrow and like ripping a part of my shirt off, and we're gonna wrap around the top part, even though it's just force. one little arrow. And uh, yeah, because I still got matches. I know they're magical matches, but you know what? I gotta do something. Because no, even totally if it's fair. a little bit of light, I'll be able to see. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> true. <laughs> Hundred percent. So, that's ooh, what I gotta do. The, there is yeah, no I'm rolls. A uh, torch. There is no rolls needed for for any of those actions. So you do have a tidy torch. Makeshift, but that's all I need. That little bit of it light. Won't, <laughs> it won't last for long. But what uh, you do see in front of you is that on the first pedestal there is an axe on the second one there is a spear on the third one there is a sword on the fourth one there is some form of book on the fifth one there is a red spiky orb on the opposite side of the room there is a small white orb in the back left corner there is a weird looking pyramid triangle thing it floats above its uh, its 
uh, its pillar. There is a gauntlet of some kind, though it is very spiky in its uh, its like appearance and its nature. It is just a singular, um, like dark iron looking uh, kind of thing. There is a weird looking uh, crown that has like a mist kind of floating around it. And then there is a small circular uh, amulet that just sits alone upon the pedestal. Oh man, I didn't come with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much shit in there. Holy crap. Hey, yeah, probably like, only enough whoa. time to get it. Like, I know. I was going to say, really... is it? Like, yeah, I wish I had time to go okay, shopping. Okay, I was going to but... say, say, how much time do I have? I don't know, do I? You have no idea. All right, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to go for the small white orb. It doesn't sound dangerous. And then <laughs> I guess we'll see what goes after that. Because if I got time, I'm going to grab some things on my way out. So you move over to the back uh, back left corner of the room to the small white orb. Uh, as you go to reach for it, your hands tink on what is some sort of crystal or glass cylinder that was around it that was near impossible to see. You would, you'll would you have to find a way through it or break through it to get to the item. Can I go grab the axe? <laughs> sure, you, can, you want to go back over to the axe? How, is it that far? No, it's it's like 10 feet. 10, 15 All right, feet. Alright, we're gonna grab the axe and we're gonna... Just, we're gonna As you go over to the axe, your hand hits Same some sort of cylinder around it. Okay. God okay. dang it! Can I... Do the, do the scrolls only work for doors, or do they work to like dispel these barriers? Can uh, I try as you to, look, is there something as you in there look, that I can use for the... Orb. As you look through the scrolls, um, it is all just unlock scrolls. And they they appear to all be uh, lock and unlock scrolls for different doors that were were done. You as you go through it, you're like the amount of doors in this building. The front door included the five doors. There are ten scrolls for that. Then there is one scroll of fireball. I wish I was there. How 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 tall is the cylinder? How tall is the cylinder? The uh, stone pedestal reaches about to your, like, belly button height kind of thing. And then above that is, like, the whatever the item is kind of set on, whether it's, like, a trophy rack or it floats or whatever it happens to be. Um, the cylinder seems to go from floor to ceiling. Because I'm thinking, can I try to fire it at, the, at there, but not directly where the orb is, just in order to try to, like, break the cylinder without damaging what's inside? Hey, here in cinematic, cinematic epic, you're always welcome <laughs> to try. That would be what I feel like Orlando would try to do. We can't. Yeah. Let's get a roll for use magical device. Do you have a point in use magical device? Let's find out. I do. I do. Hey, look at that. How helpful it will be. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. No, it's so bad. You have mastery in your magical device, you might need to re-roll that. No, thing. not that far yet. I believe we should have a D10 Calamity dice on hand. D10? Not the D10 We are going calamity. to roll a D10 Calamity dice for a miscellaneous effect that's happening here with this fireball. Oh, crap. You done goofed, kid. Hey, you know, this is the best you could have got, almost. So, with that, we'll say the red spiky orb and the triangular uh, um, pyramid um, magical items are obliterated in the explosion. You cannot see them. Uh, they seem to have been destroyed with the fireball. However, as luck would have it, the white circular orb lived through the explosion and there seems to be a crack in its um, cylinder. Okay. Would you like to force any actions? Oh my god! Because I don't know if I'm gonna like. I don't know how fast the water is going. Ugh. Okay. Here I go again. So, is is there? I guess the only other thing I can think of that she would do is try to, I guess, pry it open. 
because there's a Perfect. crack. Let's uh, let's get a let's see here. We'll say a uh, an attack with a one-handed weapon. We'll okay. That. Hey, I got a, I got, I got. Oh my god! <laughs> Bro. As as Bruh. you 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 get over there through the debris and everything, you oh get your dagger God. like pushed in, and you start to press, and then it clinks out of your hand, and your dagger goes flying into the darkness of 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 the room. I'm Let's check in with Epsilon right here. <laughs> Epsilon, a bolt of lightning is coming down into your vicinity, and it is going to crash. And you know you and the mage are going to be in the radius. You have eight seconds to make your decision. I have a quick question. Is this the kind of situation I could use a cinematic token? 100%. It is, what, mean, are you, what are you I thinking mean, of? I'm, uh, what I have envisioned in my mind is this man Epsilon going, he's going to go go down the draw because he saw what happened. He heard what happened with the <laughs> other lightning bolt. He's like, I ain't eating this bullshit. He's going to go down the draw his sword and he's going to look up at the lightning bolt and I just want to fire off a fire slash to cut the lightning bolt in half before it hits us. I will spend my so, time to do this shit. So, cinematic to tokens are used to change the narrative um, of 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 the uh, the world. Epic tokens are used to do uh, more what you're atta talking about with like an no! attack action. Now, an example of what you could use your cinematic token for would be <clears throat> that you have you know you have experience using magic into your weapon, that you have experimented, tried, or been taught the idea of catching other people's magic in your weapon. Though, in practice, you've never really done it before. You're just aware of the style. You could use your token for something like that, if you would so choose. Mm, it seems like my best opportunity, because I'm not even, I don't I don't want to roll for the, the, the slash, because I'm not sure it's going to work in the first place, but I'm going to go for that. That's fine. Uh, all right. Slash. So. With that, that means we are going to attempt to catch this lightning bolt in the blade of our weapon. We're going to use magical device. Oh dear. Oh, no, like I said, my man is mid max to hell. He got that, that that just as far as it can be in that shit. Oh please. Oh, I just <laughs> thought it was going to be that too. With, I was like, oh no. With a roll of eleven, that means um, you are at a twelve. You do have mastery with use magic item, however. Would you like to attempt a reroll, knowing that you get to keep the higher of the two rolls unless a one is rolled? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's see that secondary roll. <laughs> oh! Holy shit. That shit was scary. Holy <laughs> shit. Why, game? Why? It was right there. So the first roll oh will be taken. God. Epsilon. You hold your blade out, and it acts as a lightning rod. The the lightning arc sits way over to it, and you're holding your blade to the best you can. However, the energy from the sky is overwhelming the magics within your sword. You have two options. Allow the magic to disperse from your weapon, or continue holding on to the blade and, and this, this channeling, despite the outcomes that are about to happen. Which would Epsilon choose? Five seconds on the clock. Um, I feel like he's gonna grab the gem on the pommel and just mm -hmm. try to, just try to channel the shit, basically. Just redouble his efforts. Alright, we're going to allow for a miscellaneous roll, as this is an act of desperation, not a, a not a practiced, um, test. So, let's see a <laughs> d20 for Epsilon. An act of desperation. Bitch, I'll fuck you up. It, it hit the wall! It wanted to be funny, it hit the wall! No! It's true. Oh, God. As you grab onto the crystal to try to sustain it, you feel it cracking inside of your your hands. Despite your best attempts to like hold the blade together, the metal begins to bend and warp as you see the blade becoming super heated. Right as the blade begins to explode, the shrapnel flying towards your face, the mage behind you 
grabs your shoulders and an orb appears over your like forearms and hands and catches the shrapnel. However, it ricochets inside, slicing your hands and forearms to, to ribbons as you feel like excruciating pain. However, um, you yourself are not um, damaged by it. All that's left of your blade is the crushed gem dust in your left hand and the broken pommel oh. in your right. Oh. He's sad now. We're alive. My daddy gave me that sword. Definitely. He fucking throws that shit to the side, son. <laughs> oh. Throws that shit to the side. What? Oh, wow. Good. I was going to think you might be distracted, but uh, that portal sounds very useful. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh my god! And with, uh, let's get a round three, um, Sequoia roll. I, I love the, I just, she's gonna watch this episode and go like, I've never rolled this well. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> exactly I wish I had her roll happen. right now, son. That could have saved my sword, son. Could have saved my sword. It's true. <clears throat> With that, though, the, the party completing its third round. We're on to our next Calamity roll, and this time the dice is even smaller. Let's see that Calamity roll. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> and again, this still is counting as if it is on the full D30 Calamity table. The descriptions for each one of you. Orlina, you hear um, the, uh, what must have been a floor collapsing upon itself upstairs as water begins to pour into the basement from the streets. You're already at an above knee height in water as water is just, just like dumping in from multiple holes in uh, the, the, the ceiling above you and coming in from the outside. Tavish. As, uh, as you look out, um, you see a bolt come down and the house across the street that would be Cicero's is absolutely obliterated. Completely leveled in... Um, uh, it, it, it is nothing but a ruinous heap. And on top of that house you're in, the support beams finally give way, and the whole building is now collapsing over sideways into the building next door. Epsilon. You are, uh, you're running back, um, towards the, the town center, and you see a portal, like, spinning to life and beginning to, uh, to open. As uh, you're, you're running, though, you see that there is another bolt coming your way. Christ. All right. Let's start with uh, Orlina. Or, no, no, Tavish. We've been going, doing Tavish first, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep that. I apologize. So, Tavish. The whole building is collapsing over. What are we doing? Eight seconds on your clock. We're grabbing the wife and we're getting her, tossing her to hopefully get her to land on top of the carriage so it can get off. And then, right. as soon as she's out, I'm not going to jump to try and land on the carriage, but I'm, I'm trying to get out of that window. I'm trying to get out of the house. So, uh, let's see a... Uh, this is a person, so this would definitely be a roll, a throw heavy, which you are not, <laughs> not proficient in. I can't... Oh, God. Oh, oh no, that's not no. good. She might break a leg, y'all. She she She'll goes lose. out, and she definitely you watch as her, her like right knee just is like Ugh. bends like this the wrong way, as she Ugh. lands on the cart. However, her mother instincts kick in from her previous role, and she is able to keep her child safe despite the agony that she is clearly in. She rolls over onto her belly, putting her child beneath her as hail is still pelting down on them. The carriage begins to, to ride off to the best of his ability, yelling against the storm. The man says, Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and let's see how uh, you fare jumping uh, out of this building before it uh, collapses onto you, or, uh, onto you and the, the building to your right. So this will be a... Uh, um, would you like to do evasion uh, or athletics or acrobatics? I, if I remember, I only have one in a V. Looks like athletics Steve. is your highest. Yeah. What athletics? Let's see it. Okay. Yay. Look at you stick okay. the landing in it, and in fact, you uh, you jump joint. like you throw her out. You make sure she's safe. You jump out, and you straight up hero land. And you're able to like stand up in the street. And uh, I will say that you have a move action, um, despite having uh, made that one as a as a reward for the good one. I go across the street to Cicero's house to see if I can find any like either a body or any sort of like sign that anybody was in the home. Not a problem. Let's roll uh, an investigation for that. That is hilarious. Investigation. No! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> right now, you're, you, you just go over and you're just grabbing planks of wood and, and just, like, ripping things as best you can to find something. So right now, you're just digging through the debris. Let's check in with Orlina. On the indoor swimming pool, <laughs> how are we doing? What do we yeah, like? yeah, no. do? Yeah, I know. Did I know where my dagger went? Did I, like... Because I'm assuming I still have some kind of like, could I actually see where it went? Um, yes, you do see uh, it shimmering uh, with the very little light that's left in the room from your ex your now starting to extinguish um, arrow dagger. makeshift torch. All right, so, okay. I still, I need the dagger. I need the dagger. My thought is grab the dagger and take it. I mean, it's wet now, but I feel like in, I would take some of her, um, not obviously the whole jar, but I still have this mud wine. I want to like this. And they said it, they said they thought the mud had magical properties. So she's going to take the dagger and we're going to dip it in the wine. Set it on fucking fire and try to pry the bitch open with the magic of the mud. We're going to roll <laughs> use magic item for the first part of the lighting of the blade. Oh Good. <laughs> Look. This is a mod hoc scheme, almost and I love it. But Ooh. God, it's Ooh. crazy. Ooh. Almost got the sponsor, but almost got a one. Um, it, when it Ooh. ignites, it doesn't ignite like like a continuous like blaze. It goes like, and then extinguishes. But you know what? There's still magic in that bitch. We gonna try it one more time. Prying open uh, the 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 crystal. Let's find out. This time on roll an attack cause... roll. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're, you're, wedging help you. you're wedging it and it's giving way slowly. Just, uh. Would you like to force an action or would you like to end your turn there? I feel like I have to. Like, I'm dying here. <laughs> We're gonna force an action. This is at a minus four. I know. Oh my oh, god, that oh, was really oh, trying to wreck woo! it. He was really trying that to wreck one it. Was you're a, you're, you're, so you bad. make a little more progress. You're almost to the point where you can get like you're to the point where you can get like four or five like like fingers Come in, on. but not like your hand. And you know you just need a little more space because as you get your fingers in, the whole orb becomes like a liquid and starts to like move towards your fingers, but you're just not getting quite close enough. Would you like to force another action, or would you like to end your turn? What, wait, what happens if I do that? It will be at a minus eight. Shit. That ain't Jen. Ah. Uh, that ain't Jen at all. I don't know if that'll. I don't know if it'll end well for me that time. We're gonna have to. I'm a. Oh. Uh, no, not no, not this time. Eight is a little. Eight's a little steep. I haven't been rolling high enough for it to <laughs> even make it. <laughs> Coming down okay. from the sky. Tor oh, are, oh, are we rolling it? Oh, we rolling it? No, 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 okay, no okay. not this. Okay. All right, okay. All right. I've forced As so many bolt, actions so far. 
comes flying down towards Epsilon yet again. What is Epsilon going to do? Second bolt Boom. coming your way. Turn. A grab Cicero, and then he's going to try and propel us past the bolt with Valor Magic. Like, fire out the feet and just try to like shoot us past it before it comes down. Creative. I like it. We're going to... We're gonna roll this twofold. One is gonna be a spell, a spell casting fire roll. We're gonna do that first, and then we will do um, a secondary roll of like reflexes or acrobatics of your choice to do the steering in the moment. So first, let's do the uh, our pyro roll. Use our fire, fire casting. I'm a, I'm so a, that's I a six think to I need a seven. To I think I need to use our mastery. That. Oh no! Please don't do it don't to me. Get a hey, one. Ah! Oh my god! Oh! Oh, holy shit! <laughs> it was so close. Stop <laughs> ending! Stop it! Oh, it's been one to come up play all game. So you, I just feel like Derek's in the back of the phone on the dice list. Like, <laughs> uh, you grab onto uh, uh, to Cicero. Your hands and arms ache as blood is just seeping out from them from the shrapnel of your blade. You kick off the ground, fire jetting out of your feet. Your boots are immediately singed off of um, of, of your feet. And now, would you like to use a um, acrobatics or a reflex roll to try to steer yourself through the air? I'm gonna go with reflex. I'm gonna go with reflex. Here we go. Let's get a reflex roll for Epsilon trying to dodge past this bolt of lightning coming down. Come on, bro. Uh, that y'all almost... That thing kind of looked kind of cocked, but it's okay. That game don't make us look, that doesn't do us like that. I am going to need a true... We'll roll this on the true calamity roll. So on a, on a D30 for uh, the outcome of, uh, of this. Get a D30 Calamity roll. Let me god. live. What is that? Ooh. It just said two! Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you gonna end up killing me? Also, let me just say, not, not to... But in my mind, he like turned, grabbed him, and like went backwards. So I feel like the dude is like on top of me right now. As we're, as we're trying to fly by. So he's in the shitty, uh, the, the the more vulnerable. <laughs> he's just, he just trying to get out of the way. He's just not trying to get hit. Oh so we're just like god. as fast as we could. Oh my god! I hope he got some magic. He better save the, himself. The uh, he just had a whole bunch. The bolt of lightning. You make it slightly past as the bolt impacts on the ground, and the two of you are launched forward in Back just this in this 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 absurd speed you lose track of where everything is you feel something impact on your shoulder and um you like look up and as you look up you're like there's the portal i just have to and it closes and you're lying there you're you definitely can tell your right shoulder is is broken and you see Cicero to your left, but you cannot, he's not moving. You can't tell what's up with him, and you can't move, like, your body enough to actually check on him. Oh, Damn, we just out here. My god. Let's roll a, uh, our roll for round four Sequoia. What has she been doing this whole time? Yo. Holy shit. Oh, oh, no! That don't said. I don't like the way Adam's looking. Oh my god! That, did you see the way it rolls? What is going on? I don't like we the way this is plan, looking for any guys. of us right now. And uh, with this uh, round complete, it is now time for our next even smaller Calamity Dice World. We, we, make, we ain't making it out, y'all. <laughs> Adam said I wanted to kill everybody today. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's the football a dice. Four. It's a D4. Oh my god. Tavish 
Next, we just gonna Let's flip start. a coin. <laughs> Don't Dash. shush. As uh, as you sit there, the 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 water is rising higher and higher. Some of the planks that you're trying to lift just start floating away as you're now like sloshing around in if you stood fully up hip deep water I'm not going to find anybody in this house I need to get going and I'm the heading back metal, to the market you, the metal of your plate mail is beginning to dent from the amount of hail that is like wow. slamming into your your armor as you go to like turn and uh, look like to like move down the the street. An explosion has hit somewhere behind you, and we will go into your reactions to this in just a second. Orlina, the uh, ceiling above you gives way. Water starts pouring in, and as you like, you hear it giving way. You look up, you see what looks like a like a woman's body who has clearly perished on the floor above you falling directly towards you and uh, we'll go into your reactions to this in just a second okay epsilon you see as the the storm above you as you're just like looking to the skies starts like arcing and these lightning bolts like are coming towards each other they connect and then a singular larger bolt is coming straight down towards you they're laying their thing like why is this just keep happening to me they just followed me around let's start with tavish tavish this explosion has just gone off behind you it's like you you couldn't hear you couldn't see because of the 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 de- like the 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 metal or the ice hitting your the metal of your armor you're like just through the visor of your helmet it's getting harder and harder as the wind and the rain is just so much you only barely are able to prepare yourself as the the light of like the, your environment changes letting you know that something is striking somewhere behind you what would your reaction to this be And I know that the water is waist deep, right? Correct. I think I just dive into the water. The water is going to help take that impact, at least, hopefully, and might propel me down out of the district, and I'm diving towards (laughs) the way I came. (laughs) The Tavis torpedo. (laughs) Let's uh, so let's get a um, toughness roll first for Tavish. Two and that, which is hopefully helpful. That's decent. And then uh, we'll let uh, let's get a proper um, calamity roll. So a D thirty calamity roll for Tavish as well. <laughs> not bad, not bad. You definitely can tell that the blast wave, like any like canteen potion, vial, any sensitive item you had on your, your your person has probably broken or shattered, but your armor withstands the blast, your sword is fine, you are, for the most part, I mean, you're shaken up from it, but you are okay, all things considering, as you, like, sink to the bottom and skid across, like, the stone works of of, of the road, but you you are able to, like, push yourself back up to the surface and, and stand. Would you like to take Dang. any actions... Just moving, just getting out. I'm getting, I'm getting back to the marketplace. There's, it's time to go. I, I can't. We're, I don't have a body. I couldn't find him, and there's not. I'm guessing nobody else who can really help. They probably, or for me to help, they probably left already or are already dead. So we're getting the hell out of here. An athletics check, um, for how fast Tavish is able to make it back, or how fast you're, what progress you're able to make. And I got a two. So you do still have a two in in, in that, but uh, it is difficult with your plate mail armor, waist deep water. It's you're sloshing to the best you can. The footing is shaky. You're constantly having to move just debris out of the way, etc. But you are making progress. Um, um, making progress. Orlena, 
you look up and there is a corpse falling directly on you with the uh, also the 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 broken remnants of the seat the the ceiling and a wave of water in general coming down at you okay um well you said that since the ceiling is collapsing and you said that the uh that the uh tube here went from all the way up to the ceiling does that mean that broke too potentially you could attempt to get to the top of the the the, the pillar and and reach down what I have to get, I'm saying, would I have to get to the top or did it break since the ceiling collapsed? The is crystal, it is, it's, it's, it's so dark and the water rushing down from above you has snuffed out your, um, your one light source. And the storm has the, the sky so dark that in this environment, it is hard to tell where it is. There is some shimmers, but you can't tell if that is a break in the top or just the light glinting off of the, uh, the crystalline surface. But before that, how are we dealing with the body that is about to come head first, uh, or basically head to head with you? I mean, uh, it sounds bad if I say I step to the side because I we're gonna dodge. No, that's totally there. dodging is is a, is a fine uh, one. Would you like to use acrobatics or reflex? I don't know if I have either. You do. You don't have either. So let's get a let's get a d twenty roll. Holy fucking shit. As uh, you attempt to move out of the way, the water's just so deep at this point. The body comes crashing down. You're able to get your head out of the way, but shoulder to shoulder meets, and you feel as your right shoulder is definitely dislocated. You sink below the water, and let's roll a, um, a miscellaneous dice roll to see if you're able to uh, keep the whereabouts of the items you have in your hand. Yes, okay. you are able to keep okay. the dagger in your hand. However, you are right now on the floor, under all of the water, water pouring in um, from above you, this corpse of uh, a human woman on top of you. She's on top of me? <laughs> yes, she, she fell oh, and she God. shoulder to shoulder, and then you sank beneath the water, and uh, her body is on top of you. I mean, I still got one good arm, though. I can't push her off of me to at least attempt to stand. No, you 100% can. I'm just letting you know what your situation is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to... That's what I, was, I would probably, like I said, try to push her off. But I still got one good arm, so I can so try gonna, to stand up. We'll do uh, lifting for this one, which... Uh, lifting or athletics, you are zero in both. So we'll... Uh, like an said, unmodified dice roll. <laughs> lifting. Okay. Okay. But destiny <laughs> smiles upon the action. You realize that at this point, if you don't make something happen now, you're not going to get to to this item. You're able to to use everything. You remember back in the yeah. the bar, which feels like, I mean, aeons ago, back with a whole different party. What it was like in this close, confined uh, moment with someone on top of you, and you finding the knife into their heart. But instead, this time, you use the knife to pry into their side and roll them off of you as you get up, holding your shoulder, and you're able to wedge the dagger back into uh, the, the broken crystalline surface. Would you like to attempt another attack roll on the surface? At yes. this point, by the way, water is up to um, like it is it is above shoulder, getting to like like the the neck chin mark. But Nobody let's see that attack roll. That's <laughs> better than A it's twelve. Been. <laughs> With that, finally, my one-handed not... weapon. You're not convincingly able to, to get into it, but um, you're able to wedge it out enough, sheath your dagger, reach what part of your hand in, and the orb kind of slinks like a gel magic goop into, like, right above your hand. Right above my hand? It, like, floats above your hand. I can't grab... Can I, can I grab it? Like as you like pull your hand out, the like the substance it comes follows. With it? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so I have it. I got it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I got okay, if I got it out, I'm putting it in the bag, and I don't know how much time I have, but how do you my put it in the bag? Thought, how do I put it in the bag? Mm-hmm. I'm so right now you're you're <laughs> you're holding it like this above the water. Do I have to take the bag? Up? I don't know, cause I don't. I guess I'm over here. Like I don't want water in the bag either. I feel like I have to take the bag. I have to take the bag and put it in the bag. Just let's close roll the bag a, and put it let's back. Roll a, a, That's all let's I can roll do. A, let's roll a toughness check for your dislocated arm grabbing the bag beneath oh, the water shit. surface. I forgot mm. about that. <laughs> oh, I saw that. Because Orlena ain't no bitch. Ooh, that one was so close. But you are able to get the bag just above the surface of the water. Some water leaks into it, but for the most part you're able to get the substance in without um, letting the bag be submerged. And you re-equip it to your belt. And let's get one more athletics check to see how you're faring getting back to the town. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have an eye? Yeah, because I was going to say is like I don't know. Me and my mom, Orlena, normally she can heal herself, but there's too much going on right now, so I'm trying to figure out if I can, like, stuff a muffin in my mouth, in my face. To try You're to always welcome to try shoulder. grabbing a soggy muffin, <laughs> sure. Hey, soggy or not, it does the job. <laughs> Let's, uh, th this will be a forced action. Look, I gotta make it out. Forced action for healing? So Let's see it. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Okay. Do I get anything for Do I get anything for that though? No, no, no. So, you reach into your bag, you pull out a muffin, though it's so dark, you don't know which of the types of muffin it is. Is it the laughing muffin? Is it the healing muffin? Or is it a normal muffin? Is it Why something do I feel that like I would know? Uh, you, you feel like under normal circumstances, you 100% would know. But with the, the dim lighting and the fact that all of the muffins are extremely, like, you know, soaking in city water, uh, it is near impossible to tell. So you're like, should I eat it? Should I not? You're like, ah, you know what? All right, well... In this case, you say, "Yeah, Water's rising. roll to see how I roll to see how I get out of there." Then, because we're just going to use our legs and survival swim out this bitch. All right, athletics to get our way out. We haven't used a movement action this turn, so this will be not a forced action. Okay, that could have been worse. <laughs> could have been worse. Could have been better. But you are making a progress to leave said building. Epsilon. Before we go to you, I am going to need a miscellaneous Sequoia roll. Uh-oh. God damn. You see as Sometimes. this Sometimes. arc, this bolt is coming down at you. And and, and it's this this like thought is just like why? What? Ha. But then these small littler bolts start arcing up at this bolt, this green bolt, but these ones are purple. And they start connecting with it. They're connecting with it. And then Sequoia takes two steps above you, standing over your person, and reaches one hand up. As the bolt connects with her fingers, you see it connect and wind across the, the almost pure stone looking body that she possesses at this point. As the bolt arcs around her body, it turns from green to purple. She points off into another direction and it ripples around her arm, spending a uh, spiraling out into this purple lightning tree into the sky. I did the magic and going 
civilians are running past you. Small orphans are not running, swimming at this point past you, and they're just huddling up. There must be a group of near 50, 60 people huddled around you, waiting for the next portal to open up. Is there anything that Wait, uh, Epsilon would why, why uh, like to do? How'd I know? Yeah. Check on. They seem to say. So, uh, Epsilon? Wait, check on. Check on that guy. I point at Cicero. She glances at him, and then she looks back into, like, the storm front. <sighs> he breathes. Oh. I'll try to, I guess, collect myself off the ground if possible. <laughs> um, she, like, gestures a hand to you. It's easier for me to protect you if you're beneath me. And then I'm rather short. I at least I at least get up to a knee. <laughs> and with I the won't, uh, I won't just lay on the ground like this. With our round five completed, it's time oh for our next God. calamity. Even smaller. Jesus Christ. How do you get smaller? Oh my God. Is that three it's just gonna night? say <laughs> Help. Next time it's just gonna say good, help. bad. <laughs> like <laughs> it, Dead, next time it's just alive. say no. No. <laughs> no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> bad, even worse. <laughs> Tavish. As you're getting to like the gated area that you were able to walk through before, now it's barred. There is so much, like, in the way. And then you hear this weird noise. And as you look back behind you, there is a literal wave forming as it, rip, like, rushes to you. Debris, spears, carts, corpses, brick, stone, all being whipped up into this watery maelstrom rolling down the street at you as you look towards this barred gate area. Or Lena, as you like, l like barely get your way, like you swim up the staircase, climbing up the the spiral staircase, get to the the doorway and realize that the streets are just flooded. You take one step outside of the the Mage's Guild when another bolt strikes down into the Mage's Guild directly, and you hear what has to be the pop of all of the different items and magics that were contained within the basement behind ah. you in this sickling wave of red, orange, green, blue, black, white, brown, turquoise energy just erupts from behind you. Jin, good thing I got Jin, out. Epsilon. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking that earlier. I caught myself thinking Jin when you were about to say Epsilon earlier. It's like, no, it's a different name. <laughs> um, Epsilon, uh, for you, you watch as this stone structure seemingly starts to build and build and build itself like out from over behind the city as catapults and ballistas are focusing fire on this rock structure that is growing but in general right where you are the storm seems to almost have calmed but first to Tavish as this wave comes rolling in towards you how high... Okay, so the water is still at waist height, or how high is For, the water? Now it would be about, uh, now it would be about, like, chest height. Chest height. And I can't pull or push the gate open enough to slip through? I mean, you're always welcome to try, but it, there is, like, I... whole, like, cart... I mean, it's, it is a proper blockade, basically, of, of, of things. How tall is the wall, like, next to the, the gate? Be about 20, 20 feet. Ten. Gonna have one. to try and push open the gate and slip through as tiny of a space as I can. 
Perfect. Let's uh let's do a lifting check for Tavish. Ooh. All right, not bad. You're able to to wedge out a decent little bit of it. However, you're not you're like you get yourself through a bit, but it's just not quite enough to slip all the way through. We're going to have to force action if you want to to continue your way through. We're going to force action. Force action lift. Let's see it. Brother. Shit. Your strength gives as the, the gate closes back on top of you, wedged in between it as the wave begins to connect in with you. Debris slams into you, posts, bricks, you know, all sorts of different things. Let's roll a toughness check for Tavish. Okay. And let's okay. roll a calamity check for his arsenal. This on a proper D30. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That Joan was seven, really trying to wreck you. A seven Woo. is still not great. It's not great. And better than this. I could still, better I'm, than the one. Your helmet is about is dented into the point where you just feel it resting on like your face. Like taking your helmet off would be like like you would have to bend it out first. Mm -hmm. Your chest plate is completely caved in, like, to the point where breathing is shit, like, like, expanding your chest is really restricted, and your right arm is somewhere to, like, is, is, like, pinned, like, you were holding here, and it's been knocked and battered, and, like, the armor is, like, caught to something. You can feel that your arm isn't broken, but whatever has happened is like latched around a, like one of like the straps or into one of the plates and you can feel that that arm is connected to something now okay let's check in on or Lina. the magical I'm explosion goes sure. off behind you erupting in tons of different fire and arcane lightning you know stygian celestial all sorts of different things um and uh, let's get a, a a calamity roll again on a d30. No, no worry. Um, for uh, how uh, things are going on behind you. Oh, oh. Holy fucking shit! Oh my god! We're having no I luck with this. Rolled so All right. many calamity let's get to this. Happy man today. So many calamity rolls. The eruption sends you flying. You feel yourself like burning and freezing. You feel yourself like being, you know, touched by the chill of death itself, but also with the just the divine judgment of of a celestial creature as you go just catapulting away from the mages guild, slamming into a signpost, and we are going to roll a constitution check, a toughness check for Orlina to remain conscious. Shit. A wobble to the seventh. Well, nope. <laughs> it stabilized so fast. Orlina is out cold. We'll return to Erlena awesome. in a second. Let's go over to uh, to to Epsilon. Epsilon is as uh, the the pillar gets to the uh, or the this this stone jettison. This almost like Pride's Rock appears itself over the city. The storm silences. The lightning only flickering in the clouds, no longer coming down. The rain ceases. The wind gone. And you can tell it's it's such it's it's caught the, the battlefield so off guard that even the sounds of combat slow and, and, and falter. And you swear in the silence, 
you can hear metal boots walking up the rock fixture. When, despite the distance that this person is away from you, you feel like you can see them clearly, standing in purple clad armor. Wait a minute. He looks out upon the crowd, or the, the, the battle, and he goes, <clears throat> This is a moment in history that you could remember. And you should remember. Set aside your arms. Surrender. Surrender to the Amethyst Lord. Surrender to the Scion of the Storm. The Splitter of Clouds. The Echoing Doom. The Razor of Altrax, Cabrez, Jewstox. Breaker of the Golden Fleet, Slayer of the Iron Worm. She is the perfect facsimile to lightning and thunder. Her actions are always first, and she always has the last word. She has come to this city because she wants it. She has come to this city to take it. This squabbling will get you nothing. For she is fear. She is death. She is ra And as he goes to finish that word, a ballista shot almost connects with him, but the rock jettison, like, seemingly moves on its own accord and catches the ballista bolt. <laughs> Fine. Tread what water you can with your stupidity, but this world will drown in her wrath. And he begins to step away as a figure juts high into the sky, and it reignites. And as the bolts resume and the rain comes pouring back in, it is a deafening sound far exceeding anything that had been going on prior. Bolts start slamming down outside the city, in the city. Buildings are eradicated all around the party as doom, wrath, and despair is wrought. The portal opens behind Sequoia and Epsilon. Uh, Sequoia starts going, all of you go through and the, the civilians start pouring through this portal and she reaches hey, down. Uh, she, she looks back at Epsilon and she attempts to just push you backwards through the portal. Would Epsilon resist this? Does he have the strength? Sorry, I'm trying to get our charge before I go through the portal, at least. You want to reach know, out I'm... and grab him? Here. Yeah, I, I was going to leave because he knows he's got nothing to offer at this point. He's all broken and stuff. His sword's gone. He's like, I got I to gotta leave. Uh, but he's taking this man with him. Perfect. Grabbing him is not difficult as you, like, stumble backwards from her pushing you through the through the portal and as you get like caught up in the crowd but you grab him um as you you are kind of like swept backwards through the portal Aries crowd surf through the portal <laughs> oh <laughs> with no one to witness sequoia we will roll a miscellaneous dice roll for her you mm. <laughs> plan that no sure. oh no that's this the worst time, one she's had uh, uh, Sequoia will activate mastery on this roll. Nah, I ain't had to use it this whole time. But now we do re right. it. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, uh, Sequoia rolled a one. It just wasn't something they had. Oh, oh look at that. Me. You, a, you a, he did this. He did this. He did oh this. Oh my god. You spoke but that there's no foulness one, there's, into the air. Look, there's no one here to, uh, to, to witness. Oh so, I swear god. to god, if she died... 
if, if she wasn't even here. <laughs> um, let's go to uh, Tavish first, as Tavish right now is definitely the awake one. So Tavish, the the for for a brief moment, the water sank down to back to like waist height, and the pressure was removed from you. So wiggling yourself free would be easy. However, you would have to like unless you want to fight for it, you would have to slip your arm out of your like the gauntlet of your armor. I'm slipping it out of the gaunt, slipping my arm out of the gauntlet to get me out. Because perfect, armor um, can be replaced, in- but. It can get- He's gonna be running around like this. In, in this, as you tread water back, um, you actually see the the scene that was just described, the the man on top of the stone. As you continue, like you watch as you continue making your way back towards um, the 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 portal. The as you as you get there, um, all you see is the portal still open, and um, Sequoia like staring at herself the the purple demeanor that you saw in her gone and she slumps over like into the water unconscious I go and grab Sequoia up out of the water and if the portal's still open take myself and her through perfect the two of you head through the portal and uh, on the other side of the portal, um, uh, roll me a perception. Or a Tavish. Two. Perception for Tavish. A two. Damn, that's 20. Okay. No! You All see right. exactly what I as, want to as, tell you. Everything. As you get into the, the, the room, you let Sequoia uh, down as gently as possible. In, in this, you see Epsilon, you see a person that immediately fits the, de- the, the depiction you were given of, of Cicero. The, there's this crowd in extremely furious Anguin as he keeps telling people to like <laughs> get out of his, uh, his yeah. office. His office is also just disgusting. It's wet, there's ice on the floor. You can tell every time a portal opens, the weather just seeps on through. However, you immediately can tell that Olena is missing. Can I can I catch his eye as he's here? I yell. Uh, to... Yes, he. You would make eye contact with uh, Epsilon, hundred percent, with this this deep, with a twenty. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would just say like, Orlena hasn't come back yet. Damn the plastic girl! All right, Anguin. I don't know what ki- what kind of deal you have with her, but you want her back alive, don't you? I've got my primary charge. Why? How much time do I have left? Orlena's not here. I can do one more portal. That's about all I'll be able to muster. You do see that, like, he like all his his attitude is mostly bluster at this point. His eyes look gray and faded. His his like both of his like tail capes are like completely sunken to the floor like they're not moving like they normally do Hi. his scales look his scales look dulled and in general he has a very like like slumped over look and he's using his cane actually for like supporting himself rather than posturing oh, if, if, I could, if I could I want to go over limp my way on over to him <laughs> and I just want to I guess put a hand on him and give him what magic I have left and just say he's like keep it open unhand me can. <laughs> <laughs> unhand me villain <laughs> you definitely can tell he is he is not a fan of it but let's give him a miscellaneous d20 to see how much energy Jin could spare how much energy he did it again oh, pass, pass uh, Jin's the magic man now shit it, it, is, it is definitely a, a, a helpful amount as Anguin goes. I'll keep it open for as long as I can. Just, just have, hurry, <laughs> will you? And he, I just lay down he puts now. his hands up to the portal as Tavish, I assume, you make your way back through the portal. Yep. Uh, I start making my way back to the Academy District as I don't know what I'm going to find. And, uh, 
Uh, let's roll a uh, constitution check for or Lena. Does she I'm awaken? Like, that's pretty oh, solid. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's pretty solid. You are like, 19, like but... you're like conscious enough to like keep your head above water and like grab the post and like raise yourself up a little bit so you're not just like being at like at the elements but like your vision is blurred your head is spinning you're you could definitely tell that like something's wrong with your back um and tavish roll me a uh investigation or perception your choice which which would you which would you like uh perception i think i have two in it i believe that sounds correct yes you do let's see it all right perception we've been through, we've been through a lot it is not extremely hard to spot out or lena on uh, on the signpost as you begin to try to make your way over to her however with her constitution roll and her limited actions and you making it through the portal out of the portal and back over here we are at the end of the round which means we oh, do in fuck. fact have another calamity another roll calamity. all right here we go oh this my is god this is the ball that just hit Oh, it has exploded oh, the end! I out of here. It was just a ball. Is there anything but skulls? <laughs> I feel like ball. that's the first time Adam's actually seen it. That's right. Oh <laughs> he didn't know God. what was about to happen. All right. Derek, you're was evil. You're evil for making that. It? You're going to hell. <laughs> the, uh, you, you see the, the rider in the sky. It's the, the wings of the, the, the creature it rides flaps once and you see the hand extend into the air, grip hard, and then rip down towards the surface as the wind turns into a tornado. It slams into the ground, and it is massive in height. Entire buildings are ripped up from the ground and begin to cycle in its, uh, in its vortex. Water begins to slip away, Tavish, you just barely make it over to Orlina and like clasp hands with her. Orlina, you are, your feet are like raising up and towards like the, the tornado and your bag begins to slip and you're able to grab the bag like this. So you're not holding the post anymore. You are now only tethered by your dislocated arm to Tavish who is holding you down. Oh and you have the bag in your other hand. Holy shit. I realized, uh, we didn't, uh, well, we didn't do the thing. To overpower the storm. Do what thing? To overpower the oh. storm, we are going to, uh, roll a combined strength check for both Tavish and Orlina. Oh, so we should have done, we should have done what we did when we had to climb the mud hill. I should have tied a rope around my boy. Gorilla y'all I mean, do, do I still have a rope? Probably. Because I was thinking about that, honestly. Cause now he, it's just in the bag, suspended off to your left. Um, yeah. Tavish, <laughs> you're, you're focused on not flying away. You're not able to pull her back towards you at all. Orlina's focus seems to be on the bag. She brings the bag back over and she's able to like get it around her shoulder uh, more than she pulls herself in towards you. Yeah, because my, my I can't do much with my shoulder. <laughs> no. Um, so what I player actions would we like to take? I'm trying to think. Oh god. Okay. Um. Ten. Can I, I mean, I still have it in my hand. Can I still? Can I even though my? I can I still use my arm to like kind of wrap around something like him? You can definitely try. That is, because like I still have the bag in my hand, but I can still try to wrap around with my arm. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you're more than welcome to wrap try. Wrap him up. Wrap him up. Can I inspire so you myself? Do a... Please, her first. Uh, we'll do the Fair we'll mind. do the strength check. We'll do the strength check first for Elena to like get herself more wrapped around um, uh, Tavish's arm. 
<laughs> the god dang squirrel. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh! That's a tease. Such a tease. Uh, that ain't even right. As you and you begin right. to pull uh, clo like closer, the only leverage you really have is your dislocated arm. And right at that moment where it transitions from like elbow to shoulder to pull it in, you just feel like it just give and it just and now like you're full out and you can tell just it is slap. just pulling on muscle and tendon now is what's keeping you to Tavish. Tavish, you wanted to roll uh, to inspire yourself? I inspire myself to... Like, all right, we're doing this. And then just grab her and pull her in hard. Uh, yeah, 100%. You can dig deep in, inside yourself to find extra motivation. Let's uh, let's go for it. In, in, inspiration to self. It's coming to go to her. Fuck me. Get the fuck out of here. Um, Fuck it, hell! At, at, every Excuse time you try to like, every t like, as you're holding her, every time you try to like find like a rhythm to speak, you're like, you know, okay, I just have to be able to pang. Okay, no, all right, all right, get my footing. This is the way to pang, and it's just like the as as things hit your helmet, it's just this deafening noise that seems to interrupt all thought that you could possibly muster. Would you like to attempt the strength check anyway? I. We're going to do this strength test. This Check will be race. at uh, this will be a forced action, as you have rolled against the storm already this turn and now done an inspiration. Um, I would be doing athletics, so it wouldn't be minus four; it'd be minus two. Uh, no, you'll so you with that with with an athletics of two, you are at, like your stage is higher, so you are you are rolling at a less severe modifier against the storm. All right. Yeah, we're going to have to do it anyways. Let's see it. Oh my god. You roll worse than I was rolling earlier. At this point, the storm is too much for the, the two of your bodies. Tavish is lifted into the air, and the two of you begin to cycle around uh, the tornado. With their, uh, with their rounds completed, it is time for one more calamity. We're going to make them roll the negative one calamity dice. At this point, I, it's just the calamity it's, it's, is just a one. With this calamity. Was other things on the other one? <laughs> there were other things on that one? I didn't with see this them. Calamity, <laughs> with this calamity, as you, as you cycle in this tornado in the air, you begin to feel hail beat across your armor, lightning as it begins to arc and follow the the the, the cone of, uh, of of the wind, like pass through the two of you. We're going to roll a toughness check for both of our uh, heroes here. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, can I not roll above? This is ridiculous. Tavish, you are unconscious. You you lose grip on the world around you, and you cease to see what's going on. Orlina, you are hanging on by a thread. As you cycle around the tornado, you happened to find yourself against a piece of debris also cycling around the tornado. Every time you pass, you see the town square briefly. And you know, in this next pass, you will have the opportunity to attempt to kick off of this debris and try to leave the, the, the wind, basically. However, you have two options here. Take the easier roll and just worry about yourself and leave the vortex or attempt to bring Tavish with you. Uh, I feel like I know what you're going to do. Right, <laughs> as of right now, 
I feel like she would try to bring him with her because right now this is what's good for the group. Oh, oh okay. Okay. I'm sure, for sure, I thought she's about to leave this man behind. <laughs> that would not oh, be good. I gotta that survive. Would good that would not it be, good be a good for look. for Lena or the group right now. It would not that be a good look, but I just like I might be a bad look, but I'm alive. Let's see. Does that still this. count? Does survival count towards that? <laughs> I'll allow it. Let's say you do help. see this roll. No pressure. Oh. Boy, oh, that is fuck. such a troll. Oh! 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 It's low! It really oh! wanted to troll you! That's oh! disaster to the promised land! Oh, oh my god! god. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, also, in my mind, I just picture Orlena jumping off with this man, they get flung through the portal, and they're just gonna careen into somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care! I don't even care! <gasps> the two of you are jettisoned that from was, the wind. That was so much. That you slam hard into the ground. You definitely um, feel like, because you're holding Tavish to, to keep him with you, you definitely feel your left arm get crushed beneath his and your bolt as you slam onto the pavement. You bounce, skid, and roll, and you're just, with the strength you have left, able to, like, drag Tavish just enough for the two of you to, like, fall and slip through the portal. Uh, holy shit. And you find yourselves in Anguin's room as as you enter uh, his his quarters. He lets the portal down, and Anguin near collapses to the ground from from exhaustion. Oh my god! I asked for one simple task. <laughs> We will have words. But for now, get the fuck out of my head. <laughs> oh my god. This man trolling us for oh real, though. God. He sent us one simple task. The motherfucker was blowing. They were nuking that motherfucker place. And they got hail the size of minivans coming down. Come on now. Get to say that. Get out of here, son. If it was simple, he could have done it himself. Yeah, get you. Take your dang rodent, uh, not rodent man. Take your reptile man with you, man. Um, I'm just here laying on the ground. Like, <gasps> so I guess we're leaving. There are <laughs> multiple mages helping people like get out of the the, the mages guild. There, like as you get outside of the mages guild, there's all sorts of druids, clerics, you know, doctors, nurses, just tending to the wounded, making sure that minor injuries don't become major injuries. All sorts of different things um, like that and people rush over to you acknowledging that you are different heroes um, within Ambervale and you're immediately like your wounds are being healed and set etc um, by different uh, practitioners of, uh, of, of medicine I, uh, I would request whoever is treating me that they keep the shards of shrapnel that are in my arms <laughs> they keep them to the side for Why? me after you threw afterwards. away the hilt bro Think. you threw Think. the hilt away yeah, no, they 100% do. I was like, I'm gonna get this forged until like a little dagger or something. Tavish refuses any aid and tries to stumble back to the house. Uh, roll me a toughness check actually right now. Mm. Nah. Nah, <laughs> Tavish, not again, bro. Tavish not is again. still not um like awake, awake and aware. Cognizant. Okay. So they're just gonna do what they will. They're gonna have their way. They're gonna, with man, they're gonna cut your pants off so they can treat your legs, son. Um, overseeing, no uh, overseeing everything is um, Aegis, who's sitting like on kind of like a raised platform, watching um, yes. like everyone like um, pour and pile out. As the the four of you emerge, he immediately like puffs into like a pillar of flame and then appears in front of the party. 
all of you with me now. And the four of you, like, feel like these flames erupt around you. And then all of a sudden, you are in what you can only imagine is, um, like, a, like, a waiting room kind of area adjacent to the king's throne. I don't think I like his tone. But for now, for this session, for where we are... <sighs> I'm going to I'm going to let the the party interact um if there's anything you want to say to each other but Aegis would turn and go we'll have words in a moment and leaves the room. I, I turn and I look at Orlando and I was like I think you got some explaining to do. <laughs> this was some old bullshit. <laughs> that that was highly suspicious earlier it, how he separated it. us to talk to you. And then we go over there and we all literally almost died. Was Tavish awake? Right oh, now, no. Tavish true. is still not awake. Also, gotcha. by the way he's acting, I feel like <sighs> this is not a sanctioned mission. I... Uh... Oh. What? What I happened? I that. Oh. I... Um... I have well, such a headache. I mean... And... I gotta say, aren't any of you guys, like, kind of really hungry? You I, know... I just feel like I could eat. I hadn't even thought about food. I hadn't thought about food. I was trying... <laughs> Stay alive. Oh, that that makes sense. I just feel. Oh. And she like just like lays back on the floor <laughs> and is like holding her stomach. I'm just gonna go and see if I can rouse Tavish. <laughs> just <laughs> pushing his, his armor, just rocking it back and forth. Uh, oh, let's do a miscellaneous dice roll for. Uh, can Tavish be included? <laughs> Uh, a, a roll for Epsilon. Oh my god. That one was real close. <laughs> it was. <laughs> just actually like, kill him by rolling him. Yeah, it, or you just start strangling him. Like, just wake up! Just wake up, man! <laughs> no, um, you, you shake uh, you shake him quite a bit, but he doesn't seem to, to stir. As uh, the... Uh, is there any final, moment, uh, final comments that uh, Orlino or Epsilon would like to make? giving life signs right he just passed out yeah no he he's just like out cold and i mean his okay. his armor is quite rent he's he's very like visibly damaged but like just around him you can tell he isn't like dead though he does seem like an obscenely still person <laughs> obscenely still <clears throat> damn son <sighs> I feel like I have a question I want to ask, but I also don't want to be that guy. <laughs> what, ha so I feel what like happened? I should ask. After, what, 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 what happened what, what did after we have? you left? Oh, we got, you're talking to me? Yeah, you're the only one awake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I. Me and Cicero running towards the town square, and the bolt of lightning just kept striking almost us directly it i realized after the second one that this was definitely not natural <laughs> and i i blocked the first one with my sword but it it, it destroyed my sword all i got wow. left is these these pieces and i just pull out a little a little sack with this with the shards it's in like, it just it's jangling, jangling. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then the second one I tried to, I just tried to propel us past the lightning bolt, but I wasn't fast enough, and I think I, I think I passed did, out for a little bit too. Did we ever find out who was actually attacking? Well, I seen they, I seen the herald. He said all kinds of titles and shit. You know, 
I I cool. respect I respect like? the person with many titles. Remember, I, mean, I was knocked the fuck out. I didn't yeah. see or hear any of these things. <laughs> and I would just start talking about it. The Herald with the, the purple armor and the big ass rock coming out building itself out and he had 18 titles for this lady and then I see in a blister bolt fly towards him oh. but it got blocked by the rocks by itself and then I seen someone fly out on like a winged horse seemingly and then they started bringing the shit down so yeah you're describing Sequoia, if it wasn't for Sequoia okay. I would be dead right now what did she do the there was a third lightning bolt and I was not any in a state to protect myself but she she, re, she she absorbed and then redirected it and that's some Whoa. crazy powerful magic because my sword wasn't even able to handle it and it's supposed to be it's made for that kind of thing maybe that's why she's so hungry <laughs> but yeah, uh, my my thing, my other thing that I was gonna say of, that is not of, actually to a, a person. Lot of energy. Uh, what's this man's what's this man's arm looking like? <laughs> this is Gauntlet oh. cable. This man's well knocked out. Let me look at this man. Let, let me see what this man's arm looking like. What's um, that? What's that arm, about boy? Your arm or Tavish? Nah, arm? his arm. <laughs> Tavish, would you like to oh, describe? Okay. Let me see that arm, boy. What you doing with that arm? So it is gloves, and there is a shirt there. Do you wish okay. to remove the glove and shirt? I just I wouldn't have investigated necessarily, depending on what you tell me I'm looking at. Just from the you, you laying there. Like so I'm not gonna go in unless I, I see something that's really weird. Okay. You see that it is a heavy padded glove and a shirt that seems to be padded underneath the armor. It is exposed I mean, I and it looks like falsely padded. I'm not in the business of just interrogating how is it, my, how my does comrades' look unconscious padded? bodies. So, as, as long as it, I didn't see any like thing weird it, exposed, then I'm just leaving it, it be. Looks, it looks like instead of just one shirt, it looks like he's wearing multiple layers of clothing. He's cold. Ah, uh, you're, you're yeah, you're allowed to be cold. Uh, he's good. He, pa he passes the test. So, <laughs> like, huh, he must be fucking burning up underneath that armor. That's a lot of fucking clothes. <laughs> but if, uh, okay. if, uh, if we, if our, if our conscious characters have no actions left, that will be our session as you will wait uh, oh. for Aegis okay. to return. That will do it for us here. We will, of course, be back on the 17th. We had a couple of close calls in this session and for the first time, and we will give one out to uh, to, to Sequoia as well as uh, it is their roles were quite well, uh, quite high. Save my life. Each player is going <laughs> to get one minor epic token. Hey. I could have saved my my fucking sword if I had something like that earlier, man. Damn! Oh my god! No! <laughs> now, now that so he's we'll, alone, or now that we're back that at down. home, I guess. Before we see the king, just a single tear just drops as he thinks about the sword, looking at his little jingly oh bag. Oh my just... god! And, we're back uh, change. Oh cool. For real. So though. for now, our story concludes, but it will continue on the seventeenth. So if you want to know where we go to next, what happens, and why Aegis wishes to have words with the party, you'll have to tune back in then. But for now, bye bye Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful night and week. <laughs> oh, my God. Woo! What? Bye. Hey, hey, we made it. Oh we made it. We made it.